What's up guys? It's yo boy Omni Sensei. Welcome to, What If I Was Reborn As An Uchiha? Reviving the clan with harem system. Finale. Like, share and comment on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Also, remember to check out the original story, link in the description. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. course, when Baruto and Sasuke suddenly appeared in Konoha, the security barriers alerted Natsuo, so he had to go check the situation. However, upon seeing Baruto and the adult Sasuke, Natsuo immediately thought, isn't this plot the same as Baruto? Naruto Next Generations. Furthermore, Natsuo was surprised when he used his perception on Baruto, since it was not as simple as it seemed. Except for his appearance, his Utsutsuki lineage is very pure, and the Dejutsu he possesses is very powerful. Natsuo speculated that Baruto's Jogen must have interfered with space-time travel, in addition to the fact that the timeline in this world has been completely altered. All of this allowed them to reach this parallel timeline, instead of the original timeline of the Naruto world. This man is so strong, the adult Sasuke said, narrowing his eyes, showing a slight sign of caution in his gaze. Even though that man had done nothing and had not even shown a hint of hostility, but his instincts kept sending frantic signals to his body that this man is very dangerous. And what surprised Sasuke even more, these two are not our enemies, so you don't have to be so nervous. Natsuo responded with a smile. However, upon hearing this, the young Sasuke immediately relaxed the defiant attitude he had shown. Although Naruto asked a few questions carelessly, anyone with a discerning eye could see that he never doubted what Natsuo said. Did they both trust this man so much? The adult Sasuke thought to himself, maybe the strange changes of the two of them were because of this person. Hey, the two over there, Natsuo said with a smile. It's almost time to eat. Why don't you come to the Achiha clan for dinner? The adult Sasuke thought for a while then nodded. Then, I accept your invitation. Baruto couldn't help but glance at adult Sasuke and said in a low voice, Sasuke sensei, didn't you say you want us to have less contact with people of this era? The situation has changed. We may not be in the past. Adult Sasuke whispered, anyway, cooperate with me. I want to investigate some things Baruto naturally agreed. Then everyone returned to the Echiha clan residence together. Adult Sasuke couldn't help but widen his eyes. Is this the district of the Echiha clan? Anyway, it was the place where he grew up as a child, so he naturally remembered its location very clearly. However, he knew that after Itachi carried out the night of genocide, Kanoha seized all the clan's properties. But looking at the buildings several stories high, the modern shops filled with people coming and going, and the signs with the Achiha emblem, it clearly still belonged to the Achiha clan. This cannot be real, the adult Sasuke exclaimed, unable to contain himself. What can't be real? Naruto asked curiously. This is the commercial area of the Achiha clan, the most well-known shopping street in Kanoha, where Achiha clan products are sold. It is very famous throughout the fire country. Why, don't you know? Naruto asked with interest. Ordinary citizens of this era might not know who Achiha Natsuo is but almost no one was unaware of the products of the Ichiha clan. From household equipment, construction, to medicines, the marketing of products conquered the entire fire country, and even many merchants from other great nations used the products of the Ichiha clan. How could this person not know? Has she come from the depths of the mountains and forests? Products of the Ichiha clan. The adult Sasuke muttered as he looked around the Ichiha district frowning. If before he thought that Kanoha was advanced and resembled the Kanoha of his time, when he saw the Ichiha district he was surprised because from the infrastructure to the products being sold, it seemed like he had traveled to the future instead of the past. Unlike Baruto, who was used to the modernization of the future, the adult Sasuke, although as a child he did not care much about those things, but he knew that many of the things he saw did not exist in his time, much less the mark of the Achiha clan. When did the Achiha clan start getting involved in this kind of thing? Atachi shouldn't the adult Sasuke interrupted himself mid-comment. However, his comment did not go unnoticed by Sasuke, who looked at him seriously and said, Hey, big guy, I don't know where you got that information about my brother, but please, watch your words. With seriousness and solemnity, he continued, My brother was a spy sent by the third Hokage, he acted under orders from the third Hokage. Although he may have problems with his mentality and has become extreme in his actions, he is innocent, do you understand? In reality, all the shinobi clans knew that the story told by Natsuo and Itachi was a way to clear Itachi's name, but considering the influence of the current Achiha clan, no one would come out to refute anything. Therefore, although the members of the shinobi clans do not view Itachi favorably, the common shinobi and villagers do not even know who Itachi is, so he is able to live a practically normal life today. Ichiha Itachi, innocent. The adult Sasuke said with the corner of his eyes twitching. Of course he is innocent. Young Sasuke said emphatically. My brother was deceived and manipulated by the third Hokage and Danzo. Now, that they are dead and his infiltration mission is over, his name has been cleared. Please don't speak ill of him. 
or I won't let you go. Despite his youthful appearance and the fact that he did not pose a threat to him, his murderous intent showed how seriously he took the matter. Of course, the adult Sasuke didn't care about that kind of murderous intent, but rather, you said Itachi returned to Konoha. Adult Sasuke widened his eyes. Of course. The young Sasuke answered, a little disconcerted, looking at him out of the corner of his eye. Among Shinobi this is something very well known in Konoha, didn't you hear the news? The adult Sasuke, however, did not dwell on the young Sasuke's feelings, but instead felt a shiver run through his body, staring into space. Atachi has returned to the village has returned to the village he whispered, his eyes gradually starting to redden. Could it be that the brother in this world has returned to the village? The adult Sasuke was moved in his heart and smiled at the young Sasuke. Can you tell me more about your brother? To be honest, I'm very interested in his affairs. And so, they began a lively conversation. Furthermore, Naruto and Boruto also get along very well. Naruto, let me tell you, Ichiraku's Raymond is amazing. Boruto, it's Raymond again. Can you have something healthy? Naruto, like what? Boruto, for example, how about a hamburger? It's a main bun with meat in the middle, accompanied by some vegetables. Naruto, I haven't heard of this thing. Why don't you let my mother cook it later? Boruto was taken aback. Your mother, although Boruto is callous and young, he still knows that Yuzumaki Kishina died very early. He almost blurted out that question, but quickly changed the subject. You can try it, I promise it will definitely taste much better than that Raymond. Then give it a try, Naruto said excitedly. I'll beg my mother to make a meal later. Kishina was in a phase of warm connection with her son, and although she scolded him for his lack of interest in studies, she felt great remorse towards Naruto, and was willing to take care of him in other ways. If Naruto asked her for something, Kishina definitely wouldn't refuse him. But Natsuo couldn't help but glance at Naruto. Kishina cooking, inside the Ichiha residence. It really is my brother. He actually returned to Konoha. The adult Sasuke exclaimed in surprise when he saw Itachi, shocked inside. And also Sasuke looked at the woman next to him, looking kind and gentle. Ichiha Makoto. Mom is actually alive. Young Sasuke also mentioned Makoto, just as Naruto mentioned Kishina at his side. Of course, they did not reveal to the others that they had been revived. Naruto simply didn't say anything about it. While young Sasuke only hinted that Ichiha Fugaku discovered Itachi's movements hid Makoto until now, and only now was she able to return to Konoha. Such nonsense, the adult Sasuke simply considered absurd. It should be some kind of resurrection in Jutsu. Adult Sasuke thought to himself, but the adult Sasuke looked a little moved as if he were having a beautiful dream that he didn't want to wake up from. Despite the complexity of having another father now, his excitement surpassed everything. Adult Sasuke smiled and said, by the way, I found that there are a lot of children here. Are you using Ichiha's main house as an orphanage? Ah. What are you talking about? The young Sasuke's look was strange. This is the result of brother Natsuo's efforts to revive the Ichiha clan. It is something known to everyone in the shinobi world. Ah, revive Ichiha. Adult Sasuke was taken aback. As far as he knew, the night of the genocide according to his memories had not changed at all. At most a strange Ichiha had appeared, which caused a certain butterfly effect. He smiled slightly and asked, how did you manage to revive the Ichiha clan? To be honest, I'm also from a shinobi clan on the verge of extinction, looking for a way to revive it. This sentence has no problems reviving the clan was always Sasuke's dream when he was a child. Although this dream was gradually replaced by other things when he grew up, it still took root in the heart of adult Sasuke. For a long time, he wandered the shinobi world looking for vestiges of the Otsutsuki clan, and within him, he also harbored the hope of becoming a savior of the world, so that everyone would recognize the Ichiha. However, young Sasuke simply said, Revive the clan. It's easy. First you need money, enough to support enough babies and wives, and then you can go and have a bunch of kids with a bunch of women. Just like us Ichiha, young Sasuke was proud. Brother Natsuo has already had more than 200 children. The oldest are already in the ninja academy. In another 10 years, when Natsuo's children graduate and become shinobi, the Ichiha will regain their power as the largest clan in Konoha. As he spoke, he clenched his fist tightly, his eyes full of hope, as if he could already see the day when the Ichiha would once again dominate the shinobi world. Meanwhile, the adult Sasuke was stunned. Your plan to revive the clan is to be a stud. Are you saying this group of kids is what you call a resurgence? The adult Sasuke couldn't help but ask, what can a group of kids who haven't even finished school achieve? Why not revival? Young Sasuke said naturally, the prosperity of a clan is not measured only by its reputation and prestige in the shinobi world, but more importantly, by the number of members in the clan. Without members, how can a clan exist? Isn't the reason why my Ichiha clan is weak because of the loss of a large number of people? The young Sasuke frowning continued. Anyway, given the wealth of our Ichiha clan, we could support hundreds even thousands of members if necessary. Adult Sasuke has a weird expression, is this a question of whether he can afford it or not? However, the young Sasuke, excited, began to tell the adult Sasuke the story of the rebirth of the Ichiha clan. The adult Sasuke simply listened without much interest as he listened to the great feats of revitalization of the Ichiha clan. The Ichiha clan of this world truly stops at nothing to increase its membership. He thought to himself the adult Sasuke. However, as he watched the children playing and having fun in the distance, he was able to realize that although seeking offspring for a reward might seem vulgar, 
It really worked. But how many wives has this guy taken? And what about the reputation of the Ichiha clan? The adult Sasuke glanced at Natsuo, who was laughing and joking with Makoto, Kishina, and some of his other wives. Regarding the number of clan members and reputation, the adult Sasuke still valued reputation more. There is no other option. Brother Natsuo has no choice but to give up his reputation. Young Sasuke sighed softly. It's all for the Ichiha clan. Brother Natsuo has sacrificed a lot, but everything is okay. Young Sasuke smiled. Ever since brother Natsuo demonstrated his power, no one dares to mock us in that regard. The adult Sasuke nodded slightly. In fact, as the most powerful shinobi in the world, despite having lost an arm and having gotten married and had a daughter, he still had countless women madly pursuing him. But the adult Sasuke simply wasn't interested in women. However, it's true that you can't have an impeccable reputation and take care of the clan at the same time. But I don't see how that relates to sacrifice. The adult Sasuke thought as he watched Natsuo being attended to by his lovely wives. Of course, what young Sasuke said made some sense. After returning to his own time, the adult Sasuke decided to have more children to strengthen the Ichiha clan. Not that he would really ask his good friend Naruto, who was now the Hokage to assign the task to have more children, but trying harder with his wife at night to give Sarada some extra brothers or sisters wouldn't be bad. This world, compared to my world, has undergone enormous changes. The adult Sasuke reflected, maybe I should travel everywhere, get to know this world properly. Kishina was full of excitement. It was the first time that her son wanted to try the food she had prepared herself. How could she not try her best? As for how it would turn out either way, whatever comes out, Naruto as her son has to eat all her food. Otherwise, Heihei Naruto's impulsive decision to let Kishina cook resulted in him being forced to eat a bunch of strange and wonderful foods. The problem was not only Naruto's suffering, but Boruto was also suffering a lot. Boruto. Grandma is scary. Grandma is scary. The meal ended the adult Sasuke winked at Boruto, who was unknown whether he was dead or alive, and then left regardless of whether he saw him or not. Makoto and Itachi, after a brief hesitation, finally spoke quietly to Natsuo. Natsuo, this person. Natsuo said with a smile, Don't worry, I'll take care of everything. The two hesitated and nodded. The adult Sasuke began to investigate the changes of these years. If it weren't for Natsuo, adult Sasuke would probably be the strongest shinobi in the current shinobi world, even stronger than Nagato with the Rinnegan. Searching for information was a piece of cake for him. He soon confirmed his speculations, the differences in this world were caused by Natsuo. After gathering all the information and understanding this world better, the adult Sasuke turned his head and walked back to the Uchiha clan residence. He knew that Natsuo had noticed something about him and Boruto, but the adult Sasuke didn't give it any importance. The situation in this world in all aspects did not conform to his past, rather it seemed like a kind of alternate reality. So the question of whether to keep secrets or not no longer mattered. However, just as he reached the front door of the Uchiha residence, he saw Naruto, Boruto, and young Sasuke gathered together, laughing and leaving together. As Naruto walked, he said, Brother, let me tell you everyone in the clubhouse is talented, and they speak nicely. If you go there, you will really like it. Oh, the clubhouse. Naruto's eyes lit up when he heard that. I've never been there before, what's it about? He, that's a secret for now. Naruto laughed with a hint of mischief. You'll find out when you get there. But I promise you have fun. Adult Sasuke who just came back. The adult Sasuke momentarily froze, looking at Naruto with a strange expression. The Naruto of this world was really different from the one in his world. He had a truly legendary air. Of course, Naruto didn't invite just anyone to a nightclub. Although he didn't know what the relationship was between Boruto and himself, that sense of empathy and similarity in personality made him feel a special affinity towards the Boruto he had just met. Boruto, I think it would be better if you don't go. Adult Sasuke subconsciously persuaded. A real shinobi doesn't need to go to that kind of place. You should learn from me. But before he could say more, the young Sasuke, who was next to him, saw him and smiled. Hey, big brother, you're back. Perfect, come on, let's soak our feet together. Adult Sasuke almost spit out blood. Hey, you're me. Are you going too? I didn't care that much about Naruto's madness. But you, you're my past. Why are you joining this? Of course, he didn't understand that young Sasuke didn't invite just anyone either. He also felt an affinity with the adult Sasuke, and that was why he made the invitation so naturally. It was a friendly gesture. Well, we still won't go. Adult Sasuke coughed. That kind of place is actually not interesting. Hey, man, are you still a little kid? Naruto raised an eyebrow defiantly. Or do you think Ichiha Clubhouse is just another cheap shop? Young Sasuke intervened as well. Big brother, don't worry, the Ichiha brand guarantees a quality experience. All the men who have visited the club in the past have been very satisfied. Satisfied. Tonight's bill is on me, don't worry about it. Naruto pursed his lips but said nothing. Anyway, he had a VIP card from the Ichiha club, and the money inside it was practically unlimited. That's not the point. The adult Sasuke pondered for a moment before finding an excuse. It's just Boruto's age. What's with that? The young Sasuke said bluntly. I went when I was younger than him. Yeah, he took me there. Naruto nodded again and again, and said, Don't worry, 
I'll get some vegetarian for Baruto. The adult Sasuke was speechless. What is happening in this world? The adult Sasuke tried to find an excuse to prevent his disciple from falling under the influence of the young Sasuke and Naruto. But Baruto couldn't help but said, let's go together. I really want to see what a club is like inside. Furthermore, he lowered his voice next to the adult Sasuke's ear. Our priority is to protect dad, so we must stay close to him at all times, so we can react quickly to a possible attack from Motsutsuki Yurishiki. Sasuke Sensei, although I don't know what that place is as a shinobi, how can we not follow the best plan of action because of a small inconvenience? Adult Sasuke opened his mouth, unable to speak. As a shinobi, the mission is the most important thing. Although when it comes to the actual situation, the shinobi will not be so extreme. But as Baruto's teacher, formal education must be based on shinobi principles. It's really hard to say no. It's fine, I understand it. Adult Sasuke sighed softly. Then let's go. I will take responsibility and take care of you. Ichiha Clubhouse. Young Sasuke and Naruto definitely took out their transformation models and carefully instructed Baruto to transform into an adult. Although he didn't fully understand why. But as Naruto's son, Baruto had also reached a high level in transformation jutsu. It's just that when he just entered the gate, he was a little dazed when he saw the welcoming lady saying welcome respectfully. Here is not how Baruto thought it would be, when young Sasuke and Naruto expertly greeted the manager, and ordered the daily menu as if they were regulars, the adult Sasuke was surprised. Then the two future guests, like this, were coerced by the young Sasuke and Naruto. They entered the private room, and the waiter arrived. They were both completely bewildered. This was not something they were familiar with. But a moment later a strange expression appeared on Boruto's face. No wonder young Sasuke and Naruto love this place so much, it's really good. As for the grown-up Sasuke, his expression also changed a little bit. Although he is already an adult and his daughter has been born, he is naturally not ignorant of these things like Boruto. But the question is, is this place on Sakura's level? It must be admitted that Sakura is really faithful in her feelings, without the possibility of another man interfering. That is a very appreciable quality in a woman. But at the same time, he is completely inexperienced in such matters, and naturally does not understand much about these pleasures. Maybe after I come back, I could make her adult Sasuke thought for a while, and suddenly saw a woman walking towards Baruto, and said hastily, He doesn't need this, you come here too, Baruto. He stared at his master with wide eyes. The adult Sasuke returned a firm look meaning, This is all just superficial, the waters are deep here, I'm afraid you can't handle it, boy. But as your teacher and an adult, I can handle it. Let me take care of this. However at this time, Wow, man, you seem like such a cold person but you are actually full of flirtation. Yes, what are we waiting for? Manager, bring us 10 more for this gentleman. Both young Sasuke and Naruto spoke in unison. Soon, the other escorts arrived. Adult Sasuke was completely surrounded, trapped in a siege circle, with no possibility of escape. Of course, the same number of escorts were also assigned for Baruto. This is called treating everyone equally, owing nothing to anyone. What happened in between is not worth mentioning. In any case, when the group walked out the door, both Baruto and the adult Sasuke were on trembling legs. But they had happy smiles on their faces, and seemed to be floating slightly. Is this the life of an adult? I can't even imagine it. Baruto sighed deeply. Adult Sasuke glanced at his disciple. No, you are wrong. How can a normal adult be like this? But it's a really scary place. The adult Sasuke didn't want to look back and took a breath of cold air. Yurashiki had already drained a large amount of his chakra, and now he felt even weaker. The exhaustion was too much. Meanwhile, Naruto and young Sasuke seemed relaxed, especially Naruto, whose expression radiated freedom. Brother Natsuo is really reliable, Naruto said happily. Although I can't go out of the village as long as Brother Natsuo drags my mother a few more times. I can also get a moment of peace. Brother Natsuo, work hard. Of course, Naruto actually knew what Natsuo and Kishina were doing during the time he was with Baruto and the others. After all, he is not really an ignorant boy like Baruto. Although Baruto is not ignorant anymore, but Naruto saw the situation with good eyes. He might resent others. But not Natsuo adult Sasuke is a serious shinobi after all. Even though he had not yet fully recovered from the tremor in his legs, he approached Natsuo, Makoto, and Itachi, and willingly revealed his identity. You may have already suspected it. But yes, I am Sasuke. I have traveled from the future to here. Although I would like to say it this way, this place and my time probably exist in parallel dimensions. Saying this, both Natsuo and the other two did not show any surprise. The adult Sasuke turned serious and continued, in any case. I don't have to worry about the butterfly effect on my timeline. So there are some things I want to tell you, although I don't know if you are clear. But first of all you have to be careful of Akatsuki's organization. Nagato is not the leader of Akatsuki at all. Behind him is. Anyway, it is a parallel world. Adult Sasuke is not afraid of any influence. 
Furthermore, except for Natsuo, everyone present was his family. How could he allow his loved ones to face danger? He spoke for over an hour, delivering crucial information obtained in life or death battles, showing how seriously Sasuke took Itachi and Makoto's safety. However, the first reaction of the two after hearing everything was, You say there is someone named Otsutsuki Yurishiki who is your enemy. Have you ever suffered at his hands? The adult Sasuke opened his mouth, is this really the point? The other enemies don't matter, just Otsutsuki Yurishiki. Shouldn't your focus be on his goal of attacking Naruto who is carrying nine tails? The Otsutsuki clan, I would like to see who is stronger, Echeha or Otsutsuki. Atachi showed the eternal man Jekyo in his eyes, and his voice was firm. If they want to hurt my brother, they will have to walk over my dead body. Makoto comforted the adult Sasuke in a low voice. Don't worry, we left this in the hands of your father Natsuo. He is the strongest shinobi in the world, and he will protect you. I'll protect you too. I won't let them hurt you even for a second. Adult Sasuke. He looked at Natsuo, who was younger than him, and sighed in resignation. As a shinobi, it's not that he couldn't endure humiliations and burdens. But things like calling Natsuo dad, only Naruto can do without the slightest shame. Besides, don't underestimate me. I'm actually very strong. The adult Sasuke showed off his dejutsu. One is Manjekyo, one is Rinnegan. With a smile on his lips and a relaxed expression, he said, If it weren't for my lack of chakra, I wouldn't have lost to Yurishiki. In fact, he had almost defeated him. Mainly, he was surprised by Yurishiki's mysterious abilities, and the presence of Boruto, a rookie at his side, affected his performance. But the answer he received was Makoto. Lack of chakra. Sasuke, are you sick? Is it because of your wife from the future? She's too strong and that's why you can't keep up with her. Or is it because of the problem with your arm? Should your father treat you? Natsuo, could you help Sasuke with his arm? It won't be a problem to wait a little longer, and Itachi said. According to your description, you have fallen on his same method twice in a row. With your strength, it shouldn't be like this Yurishiki probably has some strange techniques. I'll go test him later and get the information, so that when you fight him again, you will have an advantage. Adult Sasuke. I'm not a child, you don't need to do that. But Makoto and Itachi did not pay attention to that and continued arguing among themselves. Finally, they came to the best solution. Natsuo, my lord father. They both abandoned all decorum. Makoto's voice became soft and sweet while Itachi even started calling him father. How could Natsuo not respond? Understood, I'll take care of it. Oh, just in time, he's here. As he spoke, he raised his head. Suddenly, a strange black hole appeared in the sky. A strange man with a pale complexion and white clothing came out of that hole. Adult Sasuke's expression changed. Atsutsuki Yurishiki, it arrived very quickly. The adult Sasuke said with a serious expression. This individual is the enemy you mentioned. Atachi said, narrowing his eyes. The Otsutsuki clan. Yes, that's him. Be careful, his target is the Nine Tails in Naruto's body. The adult Sasuke pulled out the saber at his waist. Yurishiki looked at Sasuke and the others and said in a flippant tone. Oh, so they arrived first. I guess my plans have been ruined. There are quite a few obstacles here. Are you all here to protect the Nine Tails? Yurishiki smiled slightly, naturally noticing that several people were beginning to surround the place where he stood. But he didn't care about that at all. Why bother? My target is only the Nine Tails. It seems like they leave me no choice. The next second, Yurishiki sharply waved his fishing rod. Boom. The seemingly light fishing rod directly hit the Ichiha clan residents. The next moment a barrier appeared that stopped the attack, but after a moment it collapsed instantly. Seeing how easily the barrier was destroyed, both Itachi and the others realized that Yurishiki was very powerful, and that it would be very difficult for them to defeat him, if they could. Yurishiki chuckled and then activated his Rinnegan. It's useless, you don't know anything about power. Before he finished speaking, he felt a huge force coming from behind him. Boom. Natsuo kicked him and he was sent flying away. Then, with a nonchalant attitude, he said, You bastard, are you trying to demolish my house or what? The adult Sasuke was surprised. This man he is stronger than he thought. He originally thought that although Natsuo was strong, he was about the same as himself. But now it seems, it seems, a little stronger than me. But how did he manage to hit Yurishiki? Adult Sasuke frowned. Natsuo, on the other hand, looked casually at Itachi, and the adult Sasuke then said, What's wrong? Why are you guys still standing here? Aren't you going to take care of Yurishiki? Natsuo, Mikoto on the side couldn't hold back. Can you beat Yurishiki? Of course. Then why don't you deal with it yourself? I don't feel like doing it. Natsuo said calmly. The corner of Itachi's mouth twitched. Natsuo-sama, Yurishiki's target is Lady Tsunade's disciple. You saw Naruto grow up with your own eyes. Natsuo, it doesn't matter, isn't there you guys? Itachi raised an eyebrow. He is a dangerous enemy. He could pose a threat to the Ichiha clan. Didn't you promise to give your life for the Ichiha clan? So I'll leave it to you. Natsuo said, smiling as he patted Itachi's shoulder. Besides, that guy was the one who bullied your silly little brother. As his older brother, shouldn't you help your brother get revenge? Itachi, the adult Sasuke couldn't help but say, Hey Natsuo. Natsuo, faced with such a powerful enemy, shouldn't we unite all available forces to defeat him quickly? Aren't you afraid of letting him get the Nine Tails chakra and becoming much stronger? You haven't considered he still wanted to persuade a few words, but was stopped by Makoto. No need to say more. Makoto sighed helplessly, 
then looked up at Natsuo. Natsuo, if you can get rid of him, tonight her voice was so low that even the adult Sasuke not far away couldn't hear what he said. But Natsuo's eyes lit up and said, not enough. What more do you want? Makoto blushed slightly and gritted her teeth. Natsuo without hesitation said, for example, the time you and Conan the surprise with Yakumo was also very pleasant, and Itachi couldn't help but sigh in resignation as he looked at Natsuo. Yes, the reason Natsuo had let the situation go was because he realized that Makoto was a treasure and could convince some of his wives to do more daring things. Before Makoto's pregnancy prevents her from joining him in these activities, Natsuo wants to take advantage of every opportunity. Natsuo said righteously, This is an elite member of the Otsutsuki clan, with great strength and a deep background. Furthermore, he has the Rinnegan. In terms of strength, there is no one in the Shinobi world who can match him. He even he might have the power to destroy the world. So I need more motivation in a stream outside Kanoha. Damn guy attacked me while my eye technique was still disabled. He has no honor. Yurashiki muttered as he stood up from the water of the stream, an angry flash in his eyes. Arrogance was something innate to members of the Otsutsuki clan. It was one thing to face another Otsutsuki as equals, but in front of the Earth natives, almost everyone showed an air of superiority. And now, being kicked by an indigenous man it was a shame. A great shame. At that moment, hum, Yurashiki looked up abruptly. He saw a gigantic Susanoo approaching, carrying several people with it. Everyone looked at him curiously, as the Susanoo rose into the air. Is this guy from Akatsuki. He actually wants to snatch nine tails. Naruto asked. It's not from Akatsuki. Akatsuki didn't have this person at least not when I was there, Conan said softly. But I feel a sense of threat from him, and his strength is definitely not weak. The Otsutsuki clan is an alien race. They have come to take the Nine Tails Chakra, Baruto explained. Nagato was surprised upon hearing this. Aliens. That would be a good thing. Could I ask about the taboos of space travel? It's not as simple as you think. The Otsutsuki clan's goal is to harvest all the chakra in the world. The adult Sasuke intervened. Everyone chatted, like spectators watching a play. Although Yurishiki's time at the Achiha clan's residence was short, the fact that his attack was on the Achiha clan's territory cannot be ignored. The place with the highest concentration of cage-level shinobi. When the Achiha clan's residence's defense systems were activated, they naturally ran towards it. They, to a greater or lesser extent, had some notion of the Otsutsuki clan. Now, seeing Yurashiki, it seemed as if they were observing some kind of rare animal, their eyes brimming with curiosity. This kind of curiosity annoyed Yurashiki. But the most important thing was, the powerful chakra of everyone present was impressive. Have all the world's experts gathered here? How come everyone came out suddenly? The corner of Yurashiki's mouth twitched. He is naturally very confident but he is actually a very cautious person among the Otsutsuki clan. Compared to others of the Otsutsuki clan who were arrogant and belligerent, he was cunning. Yes, that was something practically unimaginable for the Otsutsuki clan. Hey hey, there are so many people Yurashiki smiled. I'll leave the Nine Tails Chakra here for now. I'll come pick it up later. With that, he tried to leave. However, I'm sorry, you can't leave. Natsuo said. Natsuo smiled slightly, released the Susanoo, let everyone fall and then walked forward alone. His step was light, his expression carried a smile, and there was no trace of hostility in him. But Yurashiki's face was full of anger. Are you not taking me seriously? You have a lot of courage. Originally, he planned to retreat first and then come back when Naruto was alone. But now rage burned in his heart. Without hesitation, using his chakra-made fishing rod, Yurashiki launched a barrage of multiple hooks towards Natsuo's handcuffs. Amanasu Baraboshi no Makoto. The adult Sasuke's eyes narrowed. Almost instinctively, the adult Sasuke drew his sword to defend himself. But he was stopped by Makoto. She had a calm expression with a smile on her lips. Huh. Adult Sasuke was taken aback. Regarding that attack, Natsuo only smiled slightly, and his eyes changed. One of his eyes transformed into the Rinnegan, and the other became the Byakugan. Then he instantly formed a sword with a truth-seeking ball. Clang, clang, clang. A series of sharp metallic sounds resounded, and the huge power suddenly exploded in an instant. Within a hundred meters radius, the ground began to crack like a spider web. The strength is a bit weak. Natsuo commented calmly, holding the black sword in one hand, and beginning his counter-attack. Yurashiki did not hesitate and used his fishing rod to block the attack. The red fishing rod whistled in his hand as he moved rapidly. Clang, clang, clang. The crisp sound sounded unexpectedly with a unique sense of rhythm, showing a profound skill. It's useless. Yurashiki sneered. Do you really think you can defeat me with this kind of tricks? My eyes can see through the future. With these words, his fishing rod moved quickly, both to attack and defend, without giving ground. He was even trying to take the lead not good. Yurashiki's so-called seeing through the future seems to be true. The adult Sasuke's expression changed slightly. As an expert in Kenjutsu, the adult Sasuke could also perceive the movements of both of them. Natsuo's attacks were certainly sharp, and his movement was incredibly fluid, indicating great swordsmanship. However, the adult Sasuke, who had experienced Yurashiki's attacks, could clearly see that his physical and weapon skills, they were quite normal. Considering the difference in skills, in theory, Natsuo should have been able to easily overpower his opponent. But in reality, Yurashiki was still fighting as equals with Natsuo, without backing down at all. 
Neither showed overwhelming speed or strength to crush the other. This kind of pure combat between physical skills and weapons was like playing chess. A magnificent use of physical and sword skills can easily lure the opponent into a trap and capture their mistakes to ensure victory. But every time Yurashiki was about to fall into Natsuo's trap and find himself at a disadvantage, he would suddenly understand the best way to respond, making moves that were above his level perfectly resolving the crisis at that moment. Clearly, this could only be because he really could see the future. It's dangerous. Natsuo, don't fight him in close combat. He is invincible in this kind of battle. The adult Sasuke couldn't help but said. But in the next moment, whoosh. Natsuo instantly materialized behind Yurashiki, raising his left hand with his fingers extended. Meanwhile, Yurashiki rose slightly into the air, blood gushing from his back. Shugen, adult Sasuke. Naruto, who was next to him, couldn't contain a strange expression as he looked at the adult Sasuke. Yurashiki fell face first to the ground, and, subsequently, blood began to flow from his mouth, while he had a look full of disbelief. No, it's not right. Adult Sasuke was stunned. Why is it like this? The expressions of the others also became strange. After a moment, Yurashiki raised his body, eyes wide. This guy, how is it possible? How is it possible? He couldn't contain his fury. This shouldn't be happening. It shouldn't be like this. A fierce look flashed in Yurashiki's eyes, and he concentrated his chakra suddenly. Natsuo narrowed his eyes, pushing his arm hard. He slashed with the black sword, but Yurashiki barely managed to avoid it, leaving a deep wound on his side. Blood splashed. This type of injury could affect the course of the battle. But Yurashiki didn't seem worried. Yurashiki created a perfect sphere of reddish chakra around him. The barrier expanded and repelled everything around it. The chakra in Natsuo's body moved in response as he unleashed Shinra Tensei, colliding in direct confrontation with the expanding barrier. A burst of powerful chakra created a deafening roar. Boom. Yurashiki released a massive amount of chakra, although he didn't expect that attack to hurt Natsuo. His goal was simply to escape from the current situation. Yurashiki was thrown backwards, flying far away until he finally crashed into a small mountain, burying himself deep in the rubble. But instead of getting angry, he laughed out loud. You forced me to do this. His eyes reflected madness as he grabbed the basket from his waist without hesitation and put it directly into his mouth. Ha! Huh. The adult Sasuke narrowed his eyes slightly, and he felt a sense of threat from the other party. Not enough. I need more. Yurashiki's eyes showed madness as without hesitation. He ripped out one of his own eyes, and put it in his mouth as well. Then, just like that, he did the same with the other eye his manic smile. The blood in his eyes created a terrifying atmosphere. Suddenly, a door of light appeared in front of him. Then, he launched himself towards the door of light, and when he crossed it, he had completely transformed. A violent wave of energy was released. Yurashiki had acquired a diabolical avian form. His eyes became golden while also manifesting a golden rinnegan on his forehead. Black asymmetrical markings spread over his face and legs, and his hair grew long and wild, while his horns took on the appearance of flared wings, with the broken right horn only partially formed. An evil chakra erupted from his being. Ha 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 ha, a cold and treacherous laugh came out of his mouth, full of sinister meaning. This guy the adult Sasuke's eyes were serious. I'm going to kill you all. Yurashiki's tone changed drastically. Suddenly, he lunged forward. The target is Natsuo. Simultaneously, black marks emerged on Natsuo's face, followed by a fiery breath emanating from his mouth. The tips of her hair were dyed red, and some of the marks took the shape of flames. Since Natsuo rarely encounters strong enough opponents, and even though Yurashiki is not as powerful as Asiki, he still helped Natsuo further integrate his abilities into his combat style. However, now that Yurashiki has transformed, Natsuo must end the battle, or he will endanger his wives. The next second, Natsuo disappeared and instantly reappeared in front of Yurashiki. With a swift swing of his black sword, he decapitated his opponent, generating a wheel of golden fire. Yurashiki's body crashed down with a bang due to inertia. Before stopping completely, Yurashiki died, becoming the second member of the Otsutsuki clan to fall at the hands of Natsuo. Natsuo recovered his corpse and was going to give it to Yakushi Kabuto and Sanzu Amado to study. Okay? Natsuo slowly withdrew his hand. The adult Sasuke looked at his left hand as if he were in a dream his arm has recovered. The biotechnology of the Achiha clan is more advanced than I expected furthermore. Natsuo's mastery of Yang release is no weaker than Naruto's in six parts sage mode. The adult Sasuke took a deep breath and sighed. Thank you. The adult Sasuke tilted his head slightly. It's okay? Your mother paid for it. Natsuo waved his hand casually. Natsuo is of course too lazy to care about Sasuke in other time and space. But Makoto can't bear to look at the adult Sasuke like this. She begged Natsuo to help her again. It seems that Makoto has a lot of external debts recently, and she doesn't know if she can pay them off. Here you have this. It contains an arm made from Naruto's jeans. It also has a seal that contains Yang release. That will help connect the arm perfectly. Natsuo said handing over a scroll. The adult Sasuke was silent for a moment and took it. Honestly, Natsuo was a little fed up with the plot in Boruto, where Sasuke and Naruto were restricted to favor the protagonist. Now that the adult Sasuke's arm was completely healed, he considered Naruto's arm a free gift, a way to compensate for the restrictive plot in Boruto's story. After a while, the adult Sasuke and Boruto finally left. Before leaving, the adult Sasuke requested the Achiha clan's technology, especially information about the new Akatsuki organization's peace project. He hoped to 
to bring this peace plan into his own timeline to achieve true peace, rather than relying solely on his and Naruto's strength to maintain a strange peace. Of course, as a reward, he also presented a copy of the information he knew. It didn't mean much to Natsuo other than making him remember some things he had already forgotten. But this information to Tsunade and others was a great help. They then began planning to use future threats to further the new Akatsuki organization's peace plan. Baruto and Naruto had a lot of fun. They entered the Ichiha club many times in the past few days, and experienced happiness countless times. The adult Sasuke, with a resigned expression after several failed attempts at persuasion, seems to have eliminated Baruto from the list of possible partners for his daughter. After all, what father would want to see his daughter with someone who appears to be an old pervert? However, on the eve of Sasuke and Baruto's departure from this timeline, in Natsuo's perception, a strange energy appeared within Kanoha that caught his attention. After the departure of the two, the Achiha clan returned to its usual calm state. However, elsewhere Akatsuki's secret base. We did it. Abito looked at Killer B who had turned into a corpse, catching his breath with difficulty. Damn eight tails, what a trouble. Abito cursed secretly. In reality, Abito should have completed the extraction of the eight tails earlier. But due to the previous delay, Killer B had enough time to react. Because Natsuo took Nagato away, Abito was unable to extract the eight tails in time. So he had to keep Killer B in custody for a long time. Until he returned from Kanoha with Nagato's Rin again, and could begin the extraction. During this time, Killer B was secretly gathering energy and appearing submissive. But when Abito returned from Kanoha and planned to extract the eight tails, Killer B started making a big fuss instantly. To control Killer B, who was not in Kumogaka and had nothing to lose, Akatsuki had to make considerable efforts. Naturally, this also delayed the process. Now only the nine tails remains. Abito took a deep breath. Yeah, boss, what are we going to do? Dadara asked, when are we going to catch nine tails? This is the biggest obstacle that remains ahead. Abito looked at the crowd present. There was a bit of solemnity in everyone's eyes. Capturing the nine tails would not be easy at all. Black Zetsu pondered slightly. He was thinking whether to call Ichiha Madara out. But right at that moment, don't worry. Abito pondered for a moment, then said softly. We don't need to confront Natsuo. There are other ways to realize our dreams, Abito paused and said. Although we have not captured the two tails, the demonic statue still contains its chakra. What I'm looking for is someone who is not a Jinchuriki but has the Nine Tails Chakra. When everyone heard the words, their eyes lit up, and they subconsciously asked. Kinkaku and Kinkaku. These two people were famous for possessing the Nine Tails Chakra. Of course, they're already dead. But similar people could exist they would surely be difficult to find, but still easier than facing Natsuo directly. Yes, exactly like them. Abito smiled slightly. In fact, it was Natsuo who reminded him. The Ten Tails did not need to gather all the Tailed Beasts to activate. They only needed the majority, and if any Tailed Beasts were missing, they could compensate with part of their chakra black setsu also became excited. Although this ten tails would not be on the same level as the ten tails with all the tail beasts gathered together, it is still possible to achieve his goals. Leave this matter to me, black setsu said without hesitation. I vaguely remember hearing similar information before. It seems that in the fire temple, there is someone who has the nine tails chakra Akatsuki quickly started to move. The person with the nine tails chakra was called Sora. During the nine tailed demon fox's attack, part of his chakra was spread throughout the village. Sora's father, Kazuma, collected all the chakra and sealed it in Sora's body, turning him into a pseudo Jinchuriki. Incidentally, Kazuma, Sora's father and one of the twelve guardian ninjas, implanted the nine tails chakra into his son, primarily with the intention of using the power of the nine tails to destroy Kanoha. When Akatsuki attacked the fire temple, he also intervened to stop Akatsuki's actions. Then, along with the Fire Temple, they were easily bombarded by Dadara, and the plan to destroy Kanoha was ruined before it began. Abito captured Sora, and the news that the Temple of Fire was attacked soon spread to Kanoha. At the same time, in a calm manner, Natsuo approached Ichiraku Raymon. At this moment, in order not to attract attention, Natsuo had transformed into an ordinary villager. Owner, a bowl of Raymon, please. Natsuo said cleverly as he placed his order and sat down in front of the counter. Here's your Raymon, Atadakamasu. Natsuo ate the Raymon but didn't look away from the owner, which made him feel uncomfortable. AM couldn't hold back her laughter and said, this customer really loves Raymon. It seems like he sees dad as a treasure. Natsuo nodded. Yes, Mr. Chuchi's Raymon is simply delicious. How about opening a branch? I have connections with the person in charge of the food industry of the Ichiha clan, and I can guarantee you that it will definitely be very successful. AM was surprised. Really? It should be taken into account that although the gastronomic industry of the Ichiha clan is not as famous as the rest of its industries, it is still very well known in the shinobi world, its restaurants have a large flow of people. Natsuo gave her a smile and assured her, of course, how about you consider it? Chuchi intervened, thank you for your kindness, but it took us several years to establish ourselves, and now our business is thriving. Establishing a branch is not necessary, AM excitedly said, dad, why don't we try it? AM, you shouldn't be too ambitious, go check on the broth. After intentionally distracting AM, Chuchi said to Natsuo with resignation, Sir, AM is just an innocent girl and doesn't know many things. 
I don't think it's right, Natsua smiled. Oh really? If it weren't for the memories I extracted from Misiki and Jurashiki's souls, along with the energy you released when Sasuke and Boruto were about to return to their timeline, how would I have known that part of the will of the universe would have acquired consciousness? And then he would become the owner of a Raymond shop supervising Asura and Indra's growth constantly. Plus he would have a daughter. Now Natsuo understood why Kanoha was the protagonist's village. Although he did not have any exaggerated advantages, the fact that the will of the universe was present meant that the world would always be in his favor. Otherwise, Kanova wouldn't be so prosperous. Considering that, Natsuo wanted Aum and Chuchi to be closer to the Achiha clan. Chuchi stopped pretending. Put aside your thoughts about Aum. She is just the daughter of my incarnation and does not possess any powers. Besides, haven't I already given you enough help? Do you really think that you would have done so well if I hadn't subtly influenced things to go in your favor? Unfortunately, compared to you, I trust the reincarnation of Indra and Asura more. For some reason the destiny of the universe has centered on this planet. And they inherited the destiny of the Six Paths, which is to protect the universe and eliminate threats against it. After having transmigrated to this world, Natsuo sometimes believed that he had the protagonist's halo. Now he understood that it was the will of the universe showing him its favor. And although Chuchi could influence to a certain extent, he could not change protagonists at will. At least Natsuo was sure that until Kagaya appears, both Naruto and Sasuke would still be the protagonists. After that the protagonist was supposed to be Boruto. But with all the changes he's made, now that's impossible. So it is very likely that at that moment he will inherit the destiny of the universe or one of his children will. I think you trust Asura and Indra too much. Under my intervention, I have taken care of the cancer that is the members of the Otsutsuki clan. And you must be aware of the potential of many of my children. Betting everything on two people does not seem like the best choice to me. Even more so considering that the Otsutsuki clan wants to free itself from the limitations of this universe. Chuchi expressed his regret. What you say is true. That's why I intervened and started helping you. I can sense that, at most in five or six years, the collision of universes will begin. And in about 20 years or so, the total war will begin. Quote, you may be very powerful. But surpassing the Otsutsuki clan in five years is too difficult. I have the responsibility for the destiny of the entire universe. So for me, Asura and Indra's chances are greater. However, if you manage to inherit their destiny, I will also support you with all my power. Natsuo didn't argue anymore. It was natural that Chuchi, as part of the will of the universe, believed much more in the destiny of the protagonist. How about I confront the Otsutsuki clan and release the god trees to continue promoting this universe? I won't pressure you. But when the time comes, you will know who the true savior of the universe is. Chuchi looked at Natsuo in surprise, slightly opened his eyes, which were closed all the time, and nodded. If you manage to do that, I will support you regardless of everything else. After a moment of hesitation, Chuchi waved his hand and the Karasuki appeared in his hand. Due to the use of the Karasuki in this timeline, the space-time barriers have been weakened. This allowed me to find the Karasuki of this timeline. You should know that when Shibai stole part of the origin of the universe to evolve into a superior being, the Otsutsuki clan also took part of the origin energy and created several artifacts. The Karasuki is one of them. I will use the origin energy present in the Karasuki to repair part of the origin source of the universe and try to divert part of destiny towards you and your descendants. This is the maximum help I can give you. Natsuo was happy. This is enough. I will take care of the problem of the Otsutsuki clan and the god trees on my own. He got a lot of benefits this time and didn't bother Chuchi anymore. Chuchi also felt relieved. He also wanted to support Natsuo, but he didn't have the courage to defy fate. For him, Natsuo was more of a secondary investment, and he still trusted the reincarnation of Asura and Indra more. According to the news, it seems that Abito's plan is coming to an end. Natsuo pondered as he left the Chiraka Raymon. Therefore, Kigaya is about to enter the scene. That's pretty good. Natsuo smiled. Maintaining his smile, Natsuo walked deeper into the Ichiha clan residence. You're here again. Yujito's eyes burned with anger, and she clenched her teeth as if she wanted to bite the person in front of her. Yeah, I'm here again. Natsuo answered. Did you miss me? Leave away? Yujito was still as temperamental as ever. Or even more than before. The main reason was Natsuo lightly tapped Samyu's shoulder, who shivered and her body began to change rapidly. Natsuo gently caressed Samyu's cheek and then pressed her down lightly. Yujito simply continued to stare at Natsuo with anger in her eyes. Natsuo on the other hand, of course he would continue with his activities. But your resistance won't last long Natsuo looked askance at Yujito while devastating Samyu. The joining of Sanzo Amado to the Achiha clan has made the different research projects advance by leaps and bounds. After joining Katasuke, they managed to create a chakra-powered reactor. In addition, the Jellal Stone was recovered by Itachi. As for Haido, he was easily suppressed by Itachi and his team. Then, through different interrogation techniques, they obtained all the information he knew about the Western continent. With the information obtained, they better understood the distribution of powers within the Western continent. 
The village of Temujin, which was the closest to the Shinobi continent, turned out to be a part isolated from the western continent by an immense mountain range. Because they were isolated from the rest of the continent they were not very powerful. When Haido discovered this he decided to destroy them to take over the gel vein. After analyzing the information, the members of the new Akatsuki organization have united to send an exploration ship to the western continent. The Hokage Guard platoon of the 4th Hokage who mastered the Flying Thunder formation technique have joined as part of the exploration crew. Using their technique they plan to maintain a constant transport of personnel and materials to the outpost. Once they manage to teleport someone back to report the situation, the colonization plan is considered to have had a preliminary success. Not only has the colonization plan made great progress, Amado has also helped a lot in the research and development of the Land of Snow's environmental modification machine. Using the Chakra Reactor as a power source, the environmental transformation machine has finally succeeded. Natsuo was initially worried that drastically changing the climate would destroy the ecological balance of the planet. But after Amado's explanation, he realized that it didn't matter. The climate of the Shinobi world is very strange, and the logic of Natsuo's previous life cannot really be applied. After that, Natsuo had no more objections, and the land of snow has already been transformed into a land as warm as spring, thanks to the environmental modification machine. Although it consumes a lot of energy, the chakra reactor is enough to transform a country. The shinobi world was amazed when they learned of the transformation of the land of snow. The eyes of the leaders of the great shinobi villagers turned red with greed. If it weren't for the fear of Natsuo, they might have already sent a large number of shinobi to snatch all the technology from the land of snow. However, as the news continued to spread, Sunagaka could no longer sit still. Raso acted decisively and personally led a team of elders to visit the land of snow, then offered great rewards to obtain a similar machine. Tamari also begged Natsuo even without caring that it was her first time, and became very bold in her actions. Although afterwards she had to spend several days in bed. But Sunagaka needed the environmental modification machine more than the land of snow. Meanwhile the hidden currents of the shinobi world were stirring. Until a few days later, Hokage Guard Platoon returned to the shinobi continent using the Flying Thunder Formation technique bringing a lot of information and materials. The peace plan of the new Akatsuki organization was activated instantly. The fifth Hokage Tsunade on behalf of the Hokage invited the leaders of the five great shinobi villages to hold the Five Cage Summit. The era of chaos in the shinobi world is about to end, Tsunade said firmly. To emphasize impartiality, the five cage summits are often held in the shinobi world's only neutral power, the land of iron. However, this time, it was Tsunade who suggested that the five cage summit be held in Konohagaka. The choice of location left everyone silent. The various cages sighed softly, their eyes filled with solemnity, but no one refused. They didn't know what Tsunade had in mind, but the environmental transformation machine had upset the balance of power in the shinobi world. It has little meaning for Konoha but is extremely important for countries with extreme environments, such as the land of wind and the land of rain, and can instantly affect their national power. They had to come, they had no other option. Even if we have to pay a high price, we must obtain the environmental transformation machine. Rasa said to Gara and Baki beside him. This time, he took them with him to serve as the cage guard. Needless to say, Baki has always been a fan of Kazakuj. And Gara was sent back to Sunagaka after being revived by Natsuo earlier. He doesn't have a tail beast on his body but he can still display combat power close to the cage level furthermore. By eliminating the weakness of a Jinchuriki, he had become the strongest under the Kazakij Rasa. I'm afraid it's not easy to achieve a goal. Gara sighed, showing a calmer and gentler side than he usually had. Since Rasa had become the strongest Kazakij, the villager's tolerance towards Gara had increased considerably. Especially since Shukaku disappeared, Rasa no longer needed to force Gara. Furthermore, Baki and others took the initiative to reveal Yashimaru's sacrifice, which greatly reduced Gara's hostility. No matter how difficult it is, it has to be achieved. Rasa said decisively, I have already prepared enough kunochi in the village, even if it means weakening the village and being disgraced. I will obtain this environmental transformation machine from Natsuo. Gara's eye twitched. Send women or for girls, or for benefits you're right. That really is disgraceful and humiliating. But Baki looked fanatical. No, Kezakij sama the village trusts in your judgment and your sacrifices. We have all seen what you have done for us. You are really thinking about the future of Sunagaka. If anyone dares to look down on you, it would be like looking down on our entire village. His eyes were full of murderous intent. Such a person is not worthy of being a Suna Shinobi at all. No, he doesn't even deserve to live. Rasa's actions really stirred up feelings of humiliation. This time, Rasa was willing to give it his all. Even before leaving, he organized a promotion exam, demanding the participation of all the Kunochi in the village. Rasa even forced some married Kunochi, with good looks and strength, to divorce, and then wait for orders from the village. Basically, he stopped treating Kunochi as human beings, and regarded them as objects. If it weren't for the reputation he has built, all of Sunagaka might have rebelled. Even though these orders seemed ridiculous, Sunagaka still accepted them. Die-hard fans like Baki sought to justify Rasa's actions, highlighting the concept of a shinobi's sacrifice for profit. No, they are all partners in the village. 
And I also know that my actions are indeed not good. Rasa sighed softly, her eyes full of determination. But I'm willing to pay that price for Sunagaka, Kazuki Ichisama. Baiki looked at him with admiration and tears in his eyes. It's okay. This is my responsibility as Kazuki Ich. They both shared a strong bond of camaraderie. Meanwhile, Gara watched this nonsense in silence. As one of the few shinobi who knew Rasa's true secrets, he suddenly became curious about how his followers would react if they knew the truth about him in fact. It wasn't just Rasa who was worried. The other cages were also eager for the five cage summit. However, Kanova's actions, or rather lack thereof, confused everyone in theory. The environmental reformer would be of little value to Kanoha, which was already a great pal with rich lands. It would be normal for them to just destroy it instead of letting Sunagaka be able to obtain it. Furthermore, Kanoha's unilateral decision to choose the location for the five cage summit also left everyone puzzled. But no matter what, we have to shoulder this responsibility. Anoki took a deep breath and walked into the door of the conference hall. Let's go see what Kanoha is up to. Rasa, Terumi Mei, and Nayu Jito who was just released by Natsuo, are all here. The style of the meeting room was similar to that of the Land of Iron. Anoki is followed by his son Katsuchi and Akatsuchi. Behind Rasa are Gara and Baki. Behind Terumi Mei are Chijuro and Ao. Behind Nai Yujito were Darui and Mabu. The atmosphere in the room was extremely tense. After Anoki sat in her place, she scanned the others with her gaze. Except for Yujito who asked Darui and Mabu about the situation in Kumogaka. The others did not say a word. Where are the people from Kanova? Haven't they come yet? Anoki said in a deep voice. Hokage Sama is already on her way. A Kanoha guard whispered in a low voice. Really? No wonder Kanoha, being the strongest, is so arrogant. Mei said disdainfully. Does he rely on Natsuo's power and no longer take us into account? It is normal that people with power have the right to be arrogant. Rasa said calmly. Not everyone is like Senju Hashirama. Let's make this clear from the beginning. No matter how much it costs, Sunagaka must obtain the environmental modification machine. Rasa looked at those present and said slowly. Anyone who opposes will be considered an enemy of our village. He, Suna boy, you seem to take yourself very seriously. Anoki sneered. So what if I become your enemy? Karigaka suggests destroying the environmental alteration device. This kind of unknown power should not exist in our world. May added. Do you want to face me? Rasa narrowed his eyes, emanating a murderous aura. He, Anoki and Mei snorted in disdain, challenging him with their gazes. On the other hand, Yujito didn't say anything. She is the only cage who does not know the truth about how Rasa and Mei acquired their titles, so she still feels intimidated by them. The atmosphere in the room was charged with tension. The cages never showed weakness. Rasa exuded a murderous aura. Mei narrowed her eyes and looked at them coldly, while Anoki stood proudly. The rakage, on the other hand, was the most afraid. Kumogaka's strength is really pitiful. Behind Yujito, Dari and Mei Abui exchanging glances full of bitterness. Although Yujito was not lacking in ability, Natsuo had probably let her out to fill the scene. After the meeting, she would most likely have to return to Natsuo's hands. The cages argued for a while longer. Then, finally, Kino's representatives arrived. Sorry, I'm late. Tsunade said with a slight apology. Well, since we're all here, let's start the five cage summit. Oh, I almost forgot my cage guard is still outside. As she spoke, she suddenly clapped her hands. Several figures walked in from the door and stood silently behind Tsunade. Everyone's expressions changed instantly and their pupils shrank. Because behind Tsunade were Nagato, Conan, Yahiko and Itachi. They were all members of Akatsuki. And not only that, they were wearing Akatsuki's unique uniforms. After a long silence, it was Anoki who finally broke that sepulchral atmosphere. Tsunade, what does this mean? Anoki's tone turned cold. Has Kanoha joined Akatsuki? It's not Akatsuki, it's new Akatsuki. Tsunade emphasized and then smiled. Speaking of which, I haven't told you the purpose of this five cage summit. Rasa spoke bitterly. Wasn't it about the environmental alteration device? Of course not. Tsunade shook his head. It's about peace. She smiled through half-lidded eyes, a smile as gentle as a spring breeze. However, everyone in the room felt a chill, as if they were naked in the middle of a frozen and snowy landscape. Peace. How does Kanoha plan to achieve peace? Anoki frowned, her face darkening. Is killing us how they want to achieve peace? The other cages also had gloomy expressions. Although they knew that Kanoha did not come with good intentions, Kanoha's direct approach to the topic made them feel cold inside. Doesn't your peace involve waiting for us to be eliminated, then destroying our villages, and finally allowing Kanoha to rule the shinobi world in peace? Anoki continued in a serious voice, his personal guard also adopting an alert posture. What we seek is true peace. Tsunade shook his head slightly. Why do you think the shinobi world has not been able to achieve peace until now? Without waiting for everyone to answer, she said directly. Because of interests. Let Let's not talk about that. Let's just talk about the shinobi the shinobi wars that break out every decade or so. Why are the intervals so similar? Because in those 10 years, each village can train a new generation of shinobi, significantly increasing their numbers. But the missions available to them are limited and cannot meet the demand. If the villages do not expand, then each shinobi in the village will not be able to earn a proper living. That's why every once in a while, we unleash a big war. Even if we can't get something for our villages, 
We can at least reduce the number of shinobi and thus ensure that the remaining ones receive enough missions. Tsunade's words were crude, but the four cages showed no change in their expressions. As leaders of the most powerful shinobi villages in the world, they were already well aware of this. Of course, the situation Tsunade mentioned about shinobi can't earn a living was an exaggeration. Although there is a great economic disparity among shinobi, being a shinobi is a well-paying profession. Economic scarcity is only found among ordinary civilians. Not shinobi, who at most can stop training to reduce consumption of food, medicine and tools. But that would mean stopping getting stronger or even weakening, which is unacceptable for most shinobi therefore. The cause of the shinobi wars is not exaggerated at all. Tsunade, we all know these things, so how do you want to achieve peace? Anoki sneered. Limiting the number of admissions to big village shinobi schools. That's impossible. If someone waited patiently for over a decade and then suddenly exploded, it could swallow up the truly restricted shinobi villages. After so many years of fighting, who would trust the enemy? Of course not. Tsunade shook his head. Our peace plan in the new Akatsuki organization is to seek external benefits. When I say external, I don't mean the shinobi villages outside the five great shinobi villages, but a whole new continent. We want the great shinobi villages to unite, stopping hostilities, collaborating together and heading to colonize the new continent in unity. Then, she explained the new Akatsuki's plan. Because the territories of the countries cannot be changed without the approval of the different daimyos, and each village cannot expand at will. Each village will move population and military forces to conquer the new continent with a common enemy, internal conflicts will be reduced as will the village's dependence on the whims of the daimyos to continue functioning. The cages were not totally ignorant about the existence of another continent. Although there are few people who came to the shinobi continent from the other continent, they are not non-existent, and although they did not know many details, they had a rough understanding of the other continent. That's why they shook their heads one after another. Tsunade, your plan is absurd, how could scarce resources, we have developed ships that can reach the new continent without problems. Tsunade distributed the information obtained without hesitation. The information mentioned that the western continent was larger than the shinobi continent, and that the part that has been in contact with them is a remote part and isolated from the rest of the continent by a large mountain range. The way to gain strength on that continent was also mentioned. One way is to become a warlock, but this requires a rare gift that is almost considered a myth. Another way is to follow the knight's path, which is open to anyone who is willing to work hard. If you don't believe me, we can invite you to witness the return of our first exploration ship. Tsunade said confidently, before attempting to stabilize the shinobi world, we have sent shinobi to infiltrate and capture some merchants to confirm this information. Was she being serious? The people were stunned, but faced with so much evidence, they could not refute it. No wonder they took this initiative suddenly. They are already sufficiently prepared. They thought in silence. Then everyone fell silent. Hey Tsunade. Anoki suddenly raised his head. Your peace plan doesn't seem to require other villagers to bow their heads, right? Anyway, we have no intention of attacking Kanoha. Why are we being forced to join this plan? Anoki frowned. And what about banning walls and working together to colonize the new continent? Couldn't you do it yourselves? Although the plan for peace sounded good, wasn't it essentially a way to unify the shinobi world? No, the cost and military forces required are too high even for Kanoha. Tsunade shook his head. So far, we have only established an outpost in the isolated part of the western continent. We need to connect that part with the rest of the continent to really gain benefits and it would take a massive investment to achieve this. Colonization requires a considerable investment not only in money, but also in population and armed forces. In fact, the current plan is only viable thanks to the generous financial backing of the Ichiha clan. Otherwise, they wouldn't have gotten this far. The exploitation of minerals, the construction of settlements, the transportation of supplies, as well as the project to create a passage that crosses the mountain range, that isolates that part of the new continent. That is an astronomical expense even for the Ichiha clan. Even with Kanoha uniting they couldn't sustain it. Then how about we are willing to provide some support in exchange for a share of the colonization benefits. Rasa proposed a new approach. We only need a small part. And we are willing to offer sufficient resources. No, friction cannot be allowed to continue to exist in the shinobi world. Tsunade shook his head without hesitation. If we cannot completely unify the resources of the shinobi world, the colonization plan will remain unattainable. Furthermore, what we seek is peace. Not only the peace of Kanoha but the peace of the shinobi world. On this point, we cannot compromise. What the new Akatsuki wants is total peace in the world. A world without hunger, without wars, a world of peace in which everyone works together. The five cages fell silent once again, their expressions grim. After a long silence, finally Mei said in a deep voice, I'm sorry, if that's all your proposal, on behalf of Kurigika, I decline to join your plan. She was the first to speak, and the others followed her without hesitation. Sanagika will not participate in Kanoha's plan. The same goes for Awagika. Kumogika will not submit. They all spoke with determination and expressed their refusals. Tsunade narrowed her eyes, emanating a murderous aura. Have you made a decision? Meanwhile, Behind her, Atachi activated his manjekyo. Nagato released his aura, and small papers began to float around Conan. It was as if they were about to explode at any moment. Tsunade, do you intend to attack us? 
Anoki snorted in disdain. Who do you think we are? We are the five cages. With that said, he also showed his aura without hesitation, ready to move forward. Rasa, Mei, and the others also prepared themselves without hesitation. The cage guards behind them also did not hesitate to show their resolve. Those present were the most elite forces of the four great shinobi villages. Unless you let Natsuo do it, it's impossible to keep us. Rasa's voice was deep. Then what happens if he intervenes? Tsunade smiled, then turned his head and said, Natsuo, are you sure you can eliminate them? The next moment, Natsuo opened the door and entered. After entering, he scanned those present. Yes, it won't be difficult. It looks like I'm going to die in your hands. Mei smiled wryly. I never thought I'd worked so hard for so long, but I ended up like this. Mei didn't expect that she had paid so much and endured so much humiliation, but in the end, she still couldn't escape the end of dying at the hands of this man. However, she would not flee, much less give in, simply because of threats to her life. As leaders of their respective villages, they all had a line that they could not cross. That line was the interest of the village. Even Rasa, who had intended to pack up all of Suna's Kinochi and hand them over to Natsuo, will not make concessions on this issue. In the eyes of Mei, Anoki, Rasa and Yujido, there was an air of resolve. But at this time, Natsuo suddenly said, Why do you think you're going to die at my hands? Mei instinctively responded, Because I won't give up, and you? I just said I can kill you. But it doesn't mean I want to kill you. Natsuo looked at Mei with disappointment. Mei was his wife and had given birth to his child. Rasa was his father-in-law and had collaborated greatly with son Agaka. Anoki is similar. Not only is he Kuratsuchi's grandfather, he is also working hard to suppress Awagaka's resentment and has contributed a lot to the Ichiha clan. Although Yujido still maintained her resistance, he had invested a lot of effort in bringing her back to Kanoha. Would he really have brought her just to kill her? Why would Natsuo want to kill them? The four cages were stunned. They subconsciously looked at Tsunade. Tsunade, who usually had a calm face, now looked frustrated and angry. Natsuo, can't you cooperate with me a little? Of course, Natsuo did not promise to give his full support to Tsune regarding the colonization plan. Although theoretically everyone benefited from it, the shinobi villagers would never agree to unite under the direction of Kanoha. What's more, this also directly affected the interests of the daimyos, and the ingrained mentality of this world would not allow them to easily go against them for simple illusory benefits. Furthermore, if Natsuo suppressed everyone forcefully, he would have to become the leader. He would then have to constantly be in charge of the revolts caused by the shinobi villages as well as the different daimyos. The experts in the hands of the daimyos may not be as powerful as the cage or even some jonin, but they control large armies led by samurai. The chaos they would cause would be too much trouble, and in the end, Natsuo gains nothing more than the title of leader. He would prefer to continue with his life of luxury, and continue reviving the Ichiha clan. Of course, conquering the new continent can also bring many benefits to him. After all, colonizing means that there will be a confrontation with the existing ruling powers. This will make the shinobi become stronger in the midst of combat. If conflict is controlled properly this can make their wives and even their children stronger. Whether it's the collision of universes or future conflicts with the Otsutsuki clan, Natsuo needs the people close to him to become stronger. That's why if Tsunade couldn't convince the other cages to support her plan, he would do it his way. The four cages looked at Tsunade with strange expressions. It turns out that this was just something she imagined. They thought that Natsuo was the one who would want to unify the shinobi world. Suddenly, the four cages relaxed and regained their self-confidence. Tsunade, I think this matter won't work. Yes, the colonization plan has too many uncertainties. Is it necessary to unify the shinobi world just because of this plan? Karigako will definitely not contribute resources. Don't even think about it. Not only do they refuse to donate resources, they don't even want to participate now. Tsunade's expression turned grim, and she glared at Natsuo, blaming him for all of this. Tsunade had to be patient, explaining again and again the benefits of cooperation, pointing out the potential of the colonization plan, and envisioning a future of prosperity. At the end of it all, the four cages were also intrigued by the new continent. Their rejection of Tsunade's proposal was because this would put Kanova above the other villages, thus betraying the interests of their own villages. If this were a normal negotiation, they would be willing to participate. In the negotiations that followed, no agreement was reached in the end. In the end, under Natsuo's insistence, the Five Cage Summit was ended directly and would resume the next day at the Ichiha clan residence. The Five Cages realized that the decision would now fall in Natsuo's hands, so the best way to influence him is through his wives. So they immediately headed to the Ichiha clan residence, and then dispersed without hesitation. They began to talk seriously with the Kinochi of their respective villages who had married Natsuo to obtain more benefits for their villages. The next morning Natsuo summoned all his wives and decided to hold the first meeting of the Ichiha clan. Due to the large size of the Ichiha clan, several of Natsuo's wives have long assumed control of a large portion of the clan's assets. 
That is why figures like Yukino, Gurren, among others of his wives represent various interests within the clan structure. However, on this occasion, Natsuo has decided to summon all of his wives. Let's vote. Natsuo said seriously, it's a family meeting, one person one vote. If they have disputes or something they want me to do, they can also put it to a vote of. Course, whether what you ask is something I can do or not is another matter. The women looked at each other, sizing up their competitors, but in the end they all nodded in agreement. And so they began to discuss the next matters. Record ballot or secret ballot? Of course it will be by name. We should all be frank and express our opinions openly, shouldn't we? I think we should make it anonymous. Some people might not want certain things to be said openly by the sisters. I agree, anonymous voting would be better. More than a family gathering, this seemed like a political assembly. In other words, there is no difference between itself and a political assembly. In fact, there were hardly any matters that required Natsuo's intervention. Even without mentioning personal matters, with the resources that the Achiha clan allocated to each wife, they had everything they needed to achieve what they wanted. What really needed a vote were the issues that affected the various shinobi villages, and even the world as a whole. After arguing for a long time, Tsunade, Mei and other wives suddenly realized. The Achiha family reunion could directly determine the course of the shinobi world. After all, the Achiha clan was as rich as a nation, and its military might was the most formidable in the world. Only Natsuo had the ability to bring the entire shinobi community under his rule, not to mention the numerous high-ranking kunochi among his wives. There were more cage-level powerhouses in the Achiha clan than in any shinobi village. With so much economic and military power, if this kind of influence couldn't determine the fate of the shinobi world, what other power could? Natsuo established a system similar to a republic using his wives as representatives of the different interests of the shinobi world, and he would act as the highest authority of this system. Natsuo knew that if he did not want to dominate all the large shinobi villages by force, he must give his wives enough authority to represent their villages. At the end of the day, one way or another, the current cages are either his wives or are relatives of his wives. The results of the Achiha clan and family meeting left people like Mei, Rasa, Anoki, and others silent. Especially during the first meeting, Tamari raised the issue of selling the environmental modifier, explaining the precarious living conditions of the Land of Wind. Her original intention was to use the refusal to later propose that the Achiha clan chamber of commerce intervene more in Sunagaka. But, while people were still getting used to the voting process, the proposal won the majority of votes and passed to Natsuo. Natsuo explained that because this technology involved many core secrets of the Achiha clan, it could not be sold to Sunagaka. But he still promised to provide help to improve the living environment of Sunagaka. Natsuo took Rasa, Tamari, and his other wives to Sunagaka using the Flying Thunder God technique. Rasa then took them to the main oasis under the control of Sunagaka. Looking at the golden sand, Natsuo clapped his hands with both hands. Wood release secret technique, nativity of a world of trees. A large flow of chakra surged forth, and the golden sand was quickly swallowed by the vegetation at a speed visible to the naked eye. Giant trees emerged from the ground, even the ground began to sprout herbs and flowers rapidly. Within a radius of several kilometers, everything was covered with vegetation. Without hesitation, Natsuo instructed Rasa to continue leading him to the oases controlled by Sunagaka, and then repeated the previous operation. Several oases under Sunagaka's control either increased in size or recovered from nearly being leveled by sandstorms. Everyone was stunned, wide-eyed and powerless. It wasn't until Natsuo visited all the oases under Suna's control that he stopped. Rasa and the others next to him looked at the oasis in shock. Wood release is really powerful. Rasa inhaled deeply and looked at Natsuo. Thank you Natsuo. This great kindness will not be forgotten by Sunagaka. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. As he spoke, he bowed deeply. After a long bow, Rasa finally stood up, tears in his eyes. Although he had made many dirty deals with Natsuo, and had sent the Kinochi of his village to him, along with his daughter, but he really loves his village. The current Sunagaka has become something that he never even dared to dream of before. I remember that the first Kazakij also asked the first Hokage to help improve the oasis of the Land of Wind. But in the end he was stopped by the Senju Toborama Rasa in hell deeply. Natsuo, he is a more compassionate man than the first Hokage. Of course, it's not that first Hokage doesn't want to help, he really likes to help others. But the climate of the Land of Wind would have caused the oases to return to their previous state. The current Sun Agaka, under the influence of the Achiha clan, now has enough resources and manpower to maintain the newly transformed oasis. In fact, Natsuo still had an additional gift. I used the Shinra Tensei to smash some mountains on the border between the Land of Rain and the Land of Wind. This allowed water vapor to transfer from the excessively rainy land of rain to the land of wind, alleviating its water shortage. This solved both the problem of excess rain in the land of rain, and lack of water in the land of wind. Sunagaka and Omegaka are very grateful. Conan volunteered that same night to do many services that she normally wouldn't do. After Natsuo finished making all the arrangements for Sunagaka, Rasa's prestige once again reached its peak. Although it was Natsuo who acted, there is no doubt that Natsuo's actions were based on Rasa's foresight to send his daughter to the Ichiha clan. This proved once again that Rasa was the best Kazakij. At the same time, Natsuo's wives who cast the votes in favor that day, 
were all stunned, since after the changes that Natsuo made, they realized that their decisions directly affect the shinobi world immediately they were excited. How is it possible that a family meeting that lasted less than half an hour, decided the future of Sanagaka, one of the poorest shinobi villages? None of them could have imagined something like this. This power is too great. As was the result of the first meeting, Natsuo worked even harder to establish the authority of the family meeting. Otherwise, he would have been able to figure out how to protect the core technology of the environmental modification device before selling it to Sanagaka. He just hopes that everyone can attach importance to the family meeting. And boy, did he achieve it. When the leaders of each shinobi village got the information, their expressions changed. By the voting of Natsuo's wives, can Sanagaka's power increase drastically? The shinobi villagers that had Kinochi married to Natsuo Suo or who had a relationship with his wives contacted them immediately. Passing a proposal at the Achiha clan's family meeting would mean gaining great support for them villagers could become prosperous. Even the cages of the five great shinobi villagers could not sit still. Some shinobi clans even began to consider whether they had suitable kinochi in their families. It's a pity that at first, when Natsuo started taking wives, I was hesitant. I thought that marrying someone like that would affect the reputation of the clan. Many lamented silently. The standard to be accepted as a wife is very high. Now only cage level kinochi can be accepted damn Kinoha. They have too big an advantage. The higher ups of the various shinobi villagers cursed. After all, Kanoha is where Natsuo resides, and most of his wives are from there. The other shinobi villagers had only sent a few spies to infiltrate the Achiha clan. This means Kanoha gets the biggest advantage, hands down, which represents great decision-making power. After Hayuga Hiyashi saw the benefits Sanagaka gained, he decisively proposed to Niji that Hanata should lead the power of the Hayuga clan. There are quite a few elites in the Hayuga clan, and their KK Genkai is also one of the best. Natsuo also relaxed the conditions and lowered the threshold. Because of this, the wives of the Hayuga clan have great decision-making power within the Achiha clan. The Hayuga clan also had a strong influence in Kanoha, and had many subordinate shinobi clans. Clans. His power also extended to many civilian shinobi and smaller shinobi clans. After the integration of the Hyuga clan, they could form a large faction within Kanoha. Even if they didn't directly disagree with Tsunade, they certainly wouldn't be completely aligned with the Hokage. Maybe this is the only good news for everyone. As for the news about Natsuo's would release, we do not care. They all shrugged, no concern on their faces. Although everyone was curious about Natsuo's would release, it didn't really affect the structure of the shinobi world. What difference does it make if he has would release or not? They talk as if someone could beat him. Someone commented, even if he is 10 times stronger, he will still be the number one in the shinobi world. Can someone go from being number one to being the number minus one? Another said indifferently. No problem. Anyway, it doesn't change my attitude towards him. Another shinobi added. However, in Kanoha, there was some curiosity about Natsuo's would release. Some of the higher-ups, led by Narushikaku, had their doubts about whether Natsuo was investigating the first Hokage's body, just like Orochimaru. However, they did not delve further into the topic. After all, as other shinobi villagers said, Natsuo, who was already invincible in the shinobi world, the wood release doesn't change anything. If he showed it, people would see it one way. If he didn't show it, people would continue to see him the same way. The Five Cage Summit ended without any agreement, and Tsunade ultimately failed to integrate the great shinobi villages. However, including Nagato, everyone saw another aspect. The Achiha clan family reunion could replace the integration of the shinobi world. The Achiha clan slowly became the center of power, gaining decisive influence on the development of the world. This left everyone speechless. But they had to give in. Especially with the passage of time, the importance of the Achiha clan family reunion has been increasing. On the one hand, Natsuo consecutively supported his wife's proposals. And on the other hand, there was cooperation between the different powers of the shinobi world under the influence of the Achiha clan. Abito gritted his teeth as he watched the changes in the shinobi world. These days, he has been in seclusion with the Akatsuki members, working hard to extract the Nine Tails Chakra from Sora's body. After a lot of effort, the demonic statue can be put on the battlefield as a qualified weapon. And as soon as they came out, what a surprise. The shinobi world was technically completely unified. Although the five great shinobi nations remain independent in name, the Achiha clan family gathering has obviously become a platform for countless villages, clans, and even countries to fight against each other to decide the direction of the world. Abito can see very clearly that everyone now considers the Achiha clan family reunion to be the highest authority in the shinobi world. Looking at it from another point of view, now Natsuo's wives have a great influence on the different powers of the world representing their interests and the expectations of their people. But it must be admitted that although the family gathering of the Achiha clan also has jealousy and conflicts, its existence has instantly reduced tensions between nations and the likelihood of war outbreaks. If there is a problem, it is brought to the meeting so that everyone can vote and decide the solution. In the end, no one can resist the decisions that are approved during the meetings. Because of this, some beneficial tasks for the majority are being carried out quickly. Helping the Land of Waves to build bridges, Kurigaka to develop its maritime industry, Awagaka to improve its textile industry, Kanoha to eradicate bandits in various regions, New Akatsuki to promote the colonization plan technology, and funds controlled by the Achiha clan. 
constantly flow throughout the world, generating considerable profits, and bringing new products and jobs everywhere. Per capita resources suddenly increase, everyone can enjoy a larger slice of the pie, and conflicts of interest decrease significantly. The entire shinobi world is thriving. The shinobi world seemed to be heading towards stability. This is not what I wanted as a result. Abito gritted his teeth. For Abito, giving up the infinite Tsukuyomi plan was impossible because of Rin. Although he knew that peace was about to be achieved, he was forced to interrupt it. Fortunately, the shinobi world is not completely united yet, and I am already prepared. Abito looked at Ten Tails behind him with excitement in his eyes. The Ten Tails was completely revived. Of course, for now it was under Abito's control. But when it really started moving, there would be no hiding its presence. And now Madara, we need to be fully prepared. Black Zetsu was silent for a moment and said, The birth of the Ten Tails will not go unnoticed, and it would be better to use all the Tailed Beasts for the infinite Tsukuyomi, otherwise, it might not work. Natsuo is an enemy we cannot avoid. I know. Abito nodded slightly, then frowned. It's just that although I haven't fought against him, I also know that person is not easy to deal with. I need some more time. Abito narrowed his eyes. He planned to place numerous traps at the place where the Ten Tails would appear to strengthen his power using those traps. Rasa used this strategy in the past and managed to stop Natsuo temporarily with his own abilities. With the Ten Tails at my disposal, it should be easier. But Black Zetsu was a little flustered. Although outside rumors claim that Rasa had used the terrain to his advantage and fought against Natsuo for a long time, he was defeated in the end. But those were just rumors. He had no idea what method could stop Natsuo. Black Zetsu looked at the words would release on the intelligence reports, and his heart sank. The combination of wood release and Sharingan, the combination of Senju and Achiha, plus his talent, could have reached the level of Achiha Madara. Just relying on Abito doesn't seem very reliable, Black Zetsu mused. I should start preparing. When Akatsuki was making intensive preparations, while Akatsuki was making final preparations, the influence of the Achiha clan continued to gradually expand. Initially, the Achiha clan family meeting was only an internal meeting of the Achiha clan, even if it could affect other powers, it only moved the resources of the Achiha clan. However, one day, under Natsuki, Natsuo's direction, Tsunade brought an issue of Kanoha's development to the meeting, and began discussing it openly, even organizing a vote. Although Natsuo's wives remained silent for a moment, they finally voted in favor. So is. Natsuo was deliberately leading Kanoha to come under the rule of the Achiha clan, and free itself from the restrictions of the Land of Fire, or rather the Daimyo. Clearly the Achiha clan's family reunion would inevitably meddle in shinobi villages and national politics. This interference would only increase rather than decrease over time. This will cause the meeting to formally become the governing council of the entire shinobi world, which also meant unification. Kanoha has a large number of votes in the family gathering, giving it a significant advantage. Tsunade wanted peace and, seeing Kanoha's advantage, naturally supported Kanoha being integrated under the jurisdiction of the Achiha clan. Natsuo's other wives were not stupid. They also watched Tsunade's movements. But in the end they decided to support Tsunade's actions. Not just Kanoha, but even some activities from Sunagaka and Awagaka, were brought to a vote by Tamari and Kuritsuchi. On the one hand they realized that this was Natsuo's intention. On the other hand, the right to vote was also theirs, which meant that their power was also growing. Of course they would support the expansion of the Achiha clan's family reunion. Some senior officials in Awagiko were unwilling to accept the Achiha clan's family meeting, deciding the village's affairs, so they tried to resist. But the next day the Susanoo appeared in front of the Tsuchikage residence. It wasn't Natsuo, it was Achiha Itachi. In reality, the power of the Achiha clan's family gathering was very strong. Tsunade, Makoto, Konan, Amayori, Kishina, Mei, among other wives of Natsuo. They can also mobilize the cage-level shinobi of the new Akatsuki, Nagato, Yahiko, Atachi, Kakuzu, Sasuke and Kabuto, who was promoted to the cage level after drinking many potions from the Revival series, in addition to Kakashi, who had Hashirama cells transplanted to stabilize the Manjekyo that surpassed Akatsuki's original strength, and was far beyond the weakened Awagaka. In the end Awagaka decided to give in. After all, they were only interfering in unimportant issues, avoiding violent reaction from the Daimyo and other factions. But everyone knew that this was part of the gradual process of the Achiha clan's family reunion to gradually absorb the power of the shinobi villagers. But they couldn't do anything. Damn evil Achiha, he's going to completely complete Achiha Madara's unfinished cause of unifying the shinobi world. Everyone cursed Natsuo, and it is not achieved with military force, but through marital alliances. Meanwhile, Abito was finally ready to act. Let's start, Abito said vigorously with confidence in his eyes. He performed mudras with both hands. The next second, the Ten Tails huge body appeared instantly. Roar. A thunderous roar echoed in all directions. Now, let's see what you have prepared, Abito said as he directed his gaze towards Konoha in the distance. Yes, Abito's choice is to attack Konoha. 
The giant demonic statue advanced with enormous steps, crossing the terrain step by step. Every step he took made the earth shake. The impact was so great that it was hard to believe. The trees under his feet broke like grass under a person's feet. What's going on? It's an enemy attack. Damn, it's the Akatsuki organization. The movement of the demonic statue was so strong that the Kanoha Shinobi immediately noticed it, and immediately sent the information to the village. Did Ibito and Ten Tails choose? To attack Kanoha, Tsunade raised her head in a gesture of defiance and pride. Ichiha Sasuke, who traveled over here, has already revealed the information of Ibito, which naturally also includes the information of Ten Tails and Black Zetsu. Itachi, Nagato, Yuhiko, Kakashi, she mentioned the names of some high-level shinobi and said, Let's go. For the upcoming battle, ordinary shinobi were no longer relevant. It is a feast that only top shinobi can participate in. Also, inform Natsuo. Tell him to come over. Sune looked serious. Natsuo is probably the only one who can solve this problem in the shinobi world now after all. Both Naruto and Sasuke still had a long way to go to face this kind of elite battle. When Tsunade arrived, there were already many Kanoha shinobi who ran forward desperately, trying to stop the demonic statue. But it was evident that these ordinary shinobi couldn't stop the demonic statue even for a second. Boom, boom, boom. The huge arm lashed out, and all the shinobi that were tens of meters away were sent flying, clearly dead on the spot. Abito, stop. Tsunade shouted furiously. At the demonic statue, Abito paused and remained silent for a moment. Then, he slowly took off his mask. It seems that you all know it. It's strange. I remember that I obviously didn't show any flaws. Abito's voice was somewhat puzzled. It was really Abito. Kakashi's expression was complicated. He never expected that the leader of Akatsuki, the most powerful terrorist organization in the shinobi world, was actually his best friend. Although when Tsune took him to meet the Sasuke of the future and told him about Abito, he almost confirmed this fact. Therefore, he accepted the transplant of Hashirama's cells and began to work hard again, finally reaching the cage level. But he still couldn't believe that the kind of Beto had become what he was now. Is it for Rin Kakashi wondered silently. Tsunade, on the other hand, shouted. This is Kanoha, the place where you were born and raised. Why are you doing this, Abito? There is no need to speak further, fifth Hokage. Abito spoke indifferently. If Kanoha hands over the Nine Tails, I can forgive them and ensure a happy life for them. That's impossible. Tsunade said without hesitation. What's the point of living in an illusory world? Abito, I need to tell you something Tsunade said, looking at Black Zetsu. The Black Zetsu accompanying you is not the will of Ichiha Madara. Ichiha Madara has also been deceived. He is the child of Otsutsuki Kagaya. The purpose is to use your body to cast infinite Tsukiyomi and release Otsutsuki Kagaya. Tsunade then revealed all the information that the future Sasuke had told her about the fight between the Sage of the Six Parts, his brother, and Kagaya. Does she really know Black Zetsu's pupils shrank? but his posture remained the same. What Black Zetsu hated most was having his existence revealed, as it would devastatingly affect his plan to free his mother. Suddenly, he tensed preparing to escape at any moment. Having hidden for a thousand years, he was not willing to bet everything on one move, because once he failed, his mother would be trapped forever. What Tsunade and Black Zetsu didn't expect was that Abito simply looked at Black Zetsu in surprise, when he heard Tsunade's words, and then calmly said, Really? Thank you for the information, Hokage, but sorry. I still have to carry out my plan. Why? Tsunade asked puzzled. Don't you know that there is something wrong with that plan? Of course, I know. But infinite Tsukiyomi itself is not a problem, right? Abito said calmly. It can also achieve what I wish, can't it? As long as I can create a peaceful world with Rin, that's enough. How could he not realize that working with Ichiha Madara is like playing with fire? There was no trust between them. Abito is also certain that the incident of Rin becoming a Jinchkriki and then dying at the hands of Kakashi is the work of Ichiha Madara. Abito may not have noticed it at first, but after so many years, no matter how dull his brain is, it's time to wake up. Still, he goes ahead with the Eye of the Moon plan. Anything else can wait until he secures his victory. Abito. Kakashi gritted his teeth. It seems that you have already made a decision. Tsune took a deep breath. She wanted to instigate Abito, but failed. Come on. The next moment Itachi activated the complete body Susanoo. Sasuke was not far behind either, and the Susanoo appeared instantly. Yuhiko and Nagato appeared at Tsune's side the next instant. Amayori took out the Kiba sword, and then entered Sage Mode, before rushing forward like lightning. Both Yugao and Gurun also entered Sage Mode. Gurun then performs the Jade Crystal War 8th formation to try to stop the demonic statue. Kakashi also activated the Chidori, then drilled forward at an astonishing speed. Abito remained calm, and the demonic statue instantly destroyed the Jade Crystal War 8th formation, before continuing to advance. Then, Abito ignored everyone around him and attacked Kakashi directly. Kakashi, possessing Abito's other eye, possessed the only weakness of the Kamui ability. Kakashi quickly dodged Abito's attacks with a complicated expression. Close by were Amayori and Yugao, 
whose speed ensured that the moment Abito entered tangible mode, he would be immediately attacked. Boom, boom, boom. The demonic statue attacked savagely, destroying Gurren's crystal release in one fell swoop, causing the ground to tremble constantly. Even with sage mode, Gurren felt exhausted trying to stop the demonic statue as best she could. At that moment, Sasuke and Itachi's Susanoo simultaneously launched themselves towards the demonic statue. However, in the next instant, the demonic statue swept away the two Susanoo with a single move. It's stronger than what the future Sasuke said. Tsune looked serious. But soon, Nagato, Yuhiko, and other high-level shinobi also attacked one after another, interrupting the demonic statue's advance. You guys go too. Abito glanced at Black Zetsu, Kisum, and other members of Akatsuki. They nodded and joined the attack. The war broke out. But in the next instant, Abito's pupils shrank, and the demonic statue's attack stopped slightly. Since Natsuo had appeared next to Tsunade at some point. Natsuo. Black Zetsu had a dignified expression. Tsunade on the other hand scolded Natsuo with a serious look. You finally arrived. After all this commotion, didn't you say you'd intervene? And now you happen to be the last one to show up. It's mainly because I'm busy. Natsuo shrugged. What are you busy with? Tsunade subconsciously asked. Suddenly her nose twitched. Hey, this smell her expression gradually changed from initial suspicion to certainty and then to disbelief. Natsuo. While we were all fighting for our lives, you you, this is still daytime. She exclaimed fury in her eyes. Natsuo said perfunctorily. It's just that the sound insulation of the room is excellent. Natsu couldn't tell Tsune that he wanted Abito to succeed in the Eye of the Moon plan, so they could revive Kagaya, right? That's why the Ambu sent for Tsune couldn't find him. Furthermore, Natsuo had used Jumenso on Yujito not long ago, making her agree to become his wife in order to be able to access the Achiha clan's family reunion to seek a better future for Kumogaka. And today she finally gave in to Natsuo. Natsuo was at his most intense. How could he leave Yujito? who finally gave in and run to fight Abito. After totally devastating Yujito, it's time to face Abito. Tsune was filled with anger. However, when the others saw Natsuo arrive, their expressions instantly relaxed. Natsuo smiled lightly and looked at Abito. Abito had a serious expression, and Black Zetsu also left his opponent to join Abito. They both looked at Natsuo seriously, because this time, Natsuo had activated his Rinnegan directly. Let's follow the plan, Abito said in a deep voice. Zetsu, go take care of Kakashi and bring my eyes back. As for me, Abito gestured and the demonic statue roared, launching itself towards Natsuo. But in the next second, a titanic wooden statue with many hands appeared. Sage art would release. True several thousand hands. At the same time the dark purple glow flickered, and the Susanoo's armor was added to the wooden giant. Natsuo smiled slightly, and the wooden giant Susanoo launched several blows with his palms, knocking the demonic statue back. But quickly, under Abito's control, the demonic statue counterattacked. The two giants continued to exchange blows, causing a violent commotion that seemed like it could tear space itself. Abito's expression became increasingly gloomy because he noticed that the demonic statue was losing ground. Well, in the end I had no expectations that the demonic statue could beat Natsuo. Abito took a deep breath, so Abito narrowed his eyes slightly. The demonic statue retreated step by step but continued to attack. Oh! Natsuo raised an eyebrow as the wooden Susanoo statue followed Abito. Abito defended himself as he retreated, beginning to change the battlefield. The two sides fought for a while. So finally here, Abito smiled. Natsuo, do you know why, despite knowing that the demonic statue is no match for you, I dared to attack Kanoha? Natsuo raised his head and glanced at him. Abito chuckled and said, because here, there is my trap. In the next instant, the land suddenly transformed into a deep and bottomless swamp. Even the titanic wooden Susanoo statue was quickly submerged halfway by the quagmire. Then, suddenly, four golden chains emerged. These chains seemed a bit illusory. They were obviously not real materials, but were made of condensed chakra. And they quickly wrapped themselves around the wooden Susanoo statue, keeping it firmly bound. At the same time, barriers were erected in all four directions, creating a barrier that prohibited spatial movement within the barrier. You have prepared a lot. Natsuo looked around, among other things. He didn't know how Abito got the chains similar to the adamantine sealing chains from the Yuzumaki clan. He, if it weren't for this preparation, I would have already attacked a long time ago. Abito chuckled lightly. He had been preparing this for two full months. During those two months Black Zetsu even brought out some impressive things from Kagaya's era. All this was for this moment. Of course, with these preparations alone, it would not be possible to defeat Natsuo. So under Abito's feet, the demonic statue began to transform at an astonishing speed. His hands flattened, ten tails emerged behind him, his mouth enlarged, showing sharp teeth, and a tall bulge appeared on his back. His eyes also merged into one, finally transforming into the Rinchuring and ten tails. Natsuo said, exactly, it's the ten tails. Abito's smile widened. Abito stared deeply ahead as the back of his head connected with the ten tails in order to control it. You are really strong, very strong. Strong, Abito said calmly, other than this beast in front of us. 
I can't imagine any other way to defeat you. The ten tails opened its enormous mouth, revealing a deeply dark interior. Tell Beastball, Abito, Abito, your vision is still a little narrow. In the next instant, an incomparable amount of chakra surged out of Natsuo. The true several thousand hands Susanu exerted strength and broke the golden chains that restricted him. And with a strong push, it easily emerged from the swamp. It's so simple Abito's expression changed. A dark cloud appeared above Abito's head. The true several thousand hands Susanu, which was not much smaller than the ten tails, pounced on him. Before the ten tails redirected the attack, the true several thousand hands Susanu launched several palms, pressing it hard and smashing its huge mouth against the ground. Boom! A thunderous explosion sound rang out, and the ten tails let out a cry of heart-wrenching pain. The huge explosion of the ten tails tail beast ball also affected Natsuo and the true several thousand hands Susanu at the same time. From afar, Emeiri and the others, who had stopped the fight since the two giants started the fight, suddenly changed their expressions. Although they couldn't see the battle scene, but they could still see the huge explosion from afar. Worried, Amayori and his other wives instinctively rushed towards where Natsuo was. The rest of the cage-level combatants frowned and also rushed over. When they arrived, the explosion was already slowly dissipating, and the dust was clearing. Natsuo was still standing on the true several thousand hands Susanu, with a black sword covered in golden flames in his hand. One of his eyes had become the Rinshuringen, while the other was the Bayakugan. But from time to time, there were flashes of blue light in the... After Natsuo finished assimilating the chakra fruit, his Rinnegan evolved into the Rinshuringen. In addition to that, Natsuo noticed that now that he was technically an Otsutsuki, his chakra was purer and more powerful than when he entered six parts sage mode. Compared to his clean and tidy image, the true several thousand hands Susanu was almost destroyed. Of course, Ten Tails is also in dire shape. It was affected by the shockwaves of its own attack. Abito didn't have any injuries either. His Kamui ability could evade any attack keeping him safe. However, his expression was terrible. You're actually alright you haven't even been hurt at all. Abito stared wide-eyed. How can this be? He shouted furiously, forming hand seals. Fire release. Last wave wild dance. A whirlwind of flames erupted from the strange space in his eyes, with a feeling of distorted space roaring forward. However, Natsuo didn't even move. A transparent barrier formed around him, completely absorbing the flames. Blocking technique absorption seal. Impossible. Absolutely impossible. Abito desperately cast ninjutsu over and over again. However, nothing works. Regardless of the ninjutsu upon approaching the barrier, it was instantly extinguished, disappearing without a trace. Abito swallowed silently, but still, he gritted his teeth with determination and continued to stare at Natsuo. Don't worry. Don't worry, he can only defend himself. Once he breaks his defense, everything will be fine. Although its defense is strong, it doesn't compare to my Kamui. As long as I don't let my guard down, no one can hurt me. But in the next second, Natsuo instantly appeared near Abito, a Manatejikara. And in the next instant, Natsuo swung the black sword cutting Abito. The cut left a trail of golden flames on Abito's chest, vaguely revealing the bones beneath his skin. How is it possible? Abito spat out a mouthful of old blood. How could you cross the space and hit me? After Natsuo's chakra improved, he could now perform spatial slashes while using the improved sun breathing. That's why even though Abito used the Kamui skill to dodge the attack, he was still hit hard. Abito, it looks like there's nothing you can do. At that moment, a black substance suddenly covered Abito's body. Abito gritted his teeth. I can still fight. But what are you going to fight with? Black Zetsu shook his head and sighed. Your Manjekyo technique has been deciphered. What do you use to fight that guy? Can you beat Natsuo? Unlike Abito, Zetsu can actually sense Natsuo's Otsutsuki clan chakra. When he saw Natsuo, Zetsu was puzzled. He remembered the aura similar to his mother's, although he doesn't know how he achieved it. He is sure that Natsuo has become an Otsutsuki. You are useless to me now. Black Setsu narrowed his eyes slightly. It's time to change players. As soon as he finished speaking, a coffin appeared on top of the ten tails. The lid of the coffin dropped to reveal a sleeping face full of haki. The lid of the coffin fell, and the person was revealed to be a Chihamadara. Black Zetsu looked at Natsuo strangely. He was ready to confront Natsuo and stop his attack, but Natsuo didn't move at all. But still Black Zetsu finished the seal without hesitation. Rich vitality erupted from Ibito. Outer path samsara of heavenly life technique. Ibito, what are you doing? A voice filled with curiosity and a domineering air echoed. A Chihamadara came out of the coffin, closed his eyes and spoke in a deep voice. This is not different from our plans. Madara. Things have already gotten out of control. Black Zetsu dug out Abito's Rinnegan with one hand and said at the same time, After you, another person who possesses the Rinnegan has emerged. Even if Abito uses your eyes, he is no match for him. I can only sacrifice Abito to bring you back. After reviving Madara, Abito began to rapidly lose his vitality, and was already on the brink of death at this point. Black Zetsu cautiously watched Natsuo's movements, as he quickly moved to Madara's side. Although it was strange why Natsuo didn't act, Black Zetsu continued to advance without hesitation, while reporting the situation to Madara. In a short time, Black Zetsu finished informing him of everything relevant that had happened since he died. A member of the Achiha clan, Madara slowly inserted the pair of Rinnegan into his sockets. 
blinked and regained his vision. He tilted his head slightly, looked at Natsuo and saw his eyes. You are an impressive descendant. His voice was soft, but carried an incomparable pressure. It was the confidence that only someone who was the most powerful of his time could have. Natsuo chuckled, completely ignoring Madara's pressure. So you want to dance too? The next moment his figure abruptly disappeared and then appeared in front of Natsuo, throwing a punch. Natsuo blocked the punch with one hand, a smile on his lips. Not only do I want to dance, I also want to enjoy it. So the two began to fight and dance without hesitation. Both attacked quickly, their shadows intertwined, knocking down everything in their path. Although it was a display of violence, the movements were precise and elegant, showing a kind of unique grace almost like a dance. Ha ha ha, you really are a strong junior. Madara laughed, eyes full of excitement. As the confrontation continued, Natsuo began to suppress Madara more and more. So he stepped away for a moment, and the dark blue chakra emerged from his body. The Susanoo took shape in the blink of an eye. Susanoo raised his giant sword and prepared for a fist attack. Then he made a cut with all the power of Susanoo. But in the next instant, Natsuo raised his head and calmly looked at Madara's side. The next instant, his figure appeared next to Madara. Without hesitation, he made a cut with his black sword. Ichiha Madara's expression changed slightly, and his pupils shrank. Space ninjutsu. Boom. Natsuo's attack launched him hundreds of meters, while Natsuo stood on the gradually disintegrating Susanoo. Yu Madara stood up, covering the wound on his chest with one hand. But in the next second, Natsuo appeared beside him again. But Madara Ichiha, after all, was Madara Ichiha. He calmed down instantly, summoned Susanoo again. While resisting Natsuo's attack, he quickly approached the Ten Tails. Then he formed a seal with both hands. Come on, Ten Tails. In the next instant, the Ten Tails' huge mountain-like body twisted and was forcibly absorbed by Madara. So this is the power of Sage of Six Paths. Madara's body suddenly changed, his thick black hair turned white, he was wearing a white kimono with a pattern of six megatamas around his neck, and the truth-seeking balls appeared behind him, an immense sense of oppression emanated from Madara. He waved his hand fiercely, and the strong power was released, forming a huge wave of air, sweeping everything around. Ha ha ha. Madara laughed madly, filled with glee. This power young man, let's have another fight. With the power of the ten tails, this time boom. Natsuo swung his black sword, slashing across Madara's chest. He was covered by golden flames instantly and then flew back, coughing up blood. He was stunned, leaning awkwardly on the ground with an expression of disbelief. But the next moment, Natsuo continued attacking. Despite Madara's efforts to defend himself using the truth-seeking balls, he still continued to receive injuries. This should not be like that. It should not be like that. This shouldn't be happening. Madara was confused. Clearly, he had already been resurrected. Clearly he had the ten tails. Clearly well. I think I've played enough. Natsuo said as he clapped and smiled. Okay, now that you've become the Jinchuriki of the Ten Tails, then what are you waiting for, Black Zetsu? Or do you really not want to save Otsutsuki Kagaya? Black Zetsu, what are you waiting for? Or you really don't want to save Kagaya? Natsuo looked at Black Zetsu with a smile on his face. Black Zetsu's expression changed quickly. But when he heard Natsuo's words, he gritted his teeth and pounced directly on Achiha Madara's body. Black Zetsu, what are you doing? Madara was surprised and angry. He hadn't had the chance to hear from Tsunade about Black Zetsu's true thinking. Madara had arrived too late and acted too quickly, without giving anyone the chance to reveal anything. Black Zetsu remained silent, eroding Madara's body while looking at Natsuo with a solemn face. Natsuo also smiled slightly as he watched Black Zetsu, completely ignoring the shouts of Tsunade and the others behind him not making a move. In reality, Setsu could have escaped at that time or continued hiding for years, waiting for another opportunity. But he had been plotting for almost a thousand years until finally someone managed to awaken the Rinnegan. And his existence had already been exposed for unknown reasons. Even if he managed to avoid Natsuo's pursuit, now that everyone knows his plan, it would be impossible for him to carry it out in the future. That being the case, then he could only risk it. Natsuo, although I don't understand why you are allowing me this, but I'm betting everything. The next second Madara's body began to form seals uncontrollably. The Rinchuringan on his forehead focused on the moon in the sky. What should have been a clear and sunny sky suddenly changed to deep night at an astonishing speed. And the Rinchuringan was reflected in the moon. However, Natsuo still had a smile on his face, just watching Black Zetsu's movements quietly, as if watching a show. Madara's form began to expand, like a balloon inflating. Flows of chakra emerged from the ground, steadily penetrating Madara's body. Madara's expression distorted, as if he was enduring great pain. Despite the pain, he said, Black Zetsu, you are my will, what are you doing? No, I am the will of Kigaya. Black Zetsu spoke in a deep tone, finally answering the tall man's question. After so many years of humiliating sealing, today the seal has been broken under the guidance of the light of the infinite moon. Wake up, origin of the chakra, almighty god. After reaching its expansion limit, Madara's body began to gradually twist and shrink. Finally, he transformed into a white-haired woman with closed eyes and delicate features. She wore a white heim kimono, which fluttered with chakra fluctuations, emanating a haunting and fearsome presence. Her skin was extremely pale. The third eye in the center of her forehead, slowly open revealing the Rinchuringan. Her hair is extremely long. 
She was floating in the air with grace and majesty. Mother, you are finally resurrected. Black Zetsu's eyes were full of excitement. Natsuo, although I don't understand why you allowed me this, I am sincerely grateful. As a reward, allow my mother to absorb your chakra first however, this time, Natsuo did not remain silent like before, but directly interrupted Black Zetsu's words. As a reward, you only need to call me father. Black Setsu, Tsunade and others. In that instant, it seemed as if the entire world stopped for a few seconds. Kigaya woke up like someone emerging from a deep sleep, slowly opening her eyes filled with confusion. As she clenched and opened her hands, she noticed that her strength was lower than what she had before being sealed. How did Black Setsu do things? Such a resurrection would be worse than no resurrection at all. Ha ha ha. Natsuo, although I always knew that the Achiha are a crazy bunch, I didn't expect you to be so radically insane. Black Zetsu laughed wildly. If he was a normal person, tears would be streaming down his face right now. It turns out that you allowed my actions for such a vulgar matter. Unfortunately, I was always on guard. Worried that you might attack me at any time. Why is this something vulgar? I'm being quite serious Natsuo smiled slightly. Kigaya Haim, could you be my wife? He said this as he extended his hand with a gentle look on his face as if he was looking at his loved one. Kigaya looked at him silently without moving. But when she tried to feel Natsuo's strength she was completely stunned. The other party's strength was greater than her even during her heyday. She also noticed that the other party seemed to be an Otsutsuki but at the same time seemed to be different. However, contrary to her expectations, instead of getting angry at the other party's disrespectful tone, it awakened something else in her. Something primal, something she knew she couldn't fully control, despite the incredible level of power she possessed. Her face flushed as she realized what she was feeling the desire to procreate. Mom Black Setsu screamed. What's the situation? Tsunade and the others were puzzled. Natsuo was also a little surprised, because although he didn't feel the same feeling as Kagaya, he was also affected a little. Then he smiled slightly and thought. It seems that this situation is better than I initially expected. Although Kigaya had a distant and cold appearance and had two children, in reality she didn't have much experience with men. Otherwise, considering her strength, she shouldn't be so affected by the sexy reverse harem technique in the Naruto series. The Otsutsuki clan is noted for consuming the genetic material and life energy of a world to advance its biological evolution. This process turns them into superior beings in biological terms. But it also intensifies certain emotions, such as anger, arrogance, and the need to procreate. But because the Otsutsuki clan enslaved the god trees, no other species could evolve to the level they possess. Which is why there have been no cases in which the need to procreate manifests itself in an uncontrolled manner in them. On the other hand, because Natsuo became stronger with the help of the system, this caused him to technically become a superior human. Added to this, by consuming the chakra fruit, he reached a level of biological superiority comparable or even higher than that of the Otsutsuki, which explains Kagaya's intense reaction upon seeing him. Kagaya's white eyes, as pure as snow, involuntarily fell on Natsuo. Although his expression was still distant, everyone noticed that his eyes showed desire and lust. What's wrong with this woman? Tsunade said instinctively. We are enemies, and she is lusting after my husband. Mom, you have to calm down. Black Zetsu also wailed. Don't you want to gather all the chakra in the shinobi world? Are you going to give up your dream? After Zetsu finished speaking, Natsuo looked at him coldly. His expression was similar to that of a mean man who desired the body of a divorced woman, but was continually prevented by her son Kagaya, shielded by Black Setsu behind her and said apologetically, I'm sorry, Setsu only cares about me. Don't listen to his words. Black Setsu said anxiously, Mother be careful, don't be fooled. Natsuo is very dangerous. He is the most powerful enemy in your quest to collect chakra. His behavior resembled how a child would feel seeing his mother considering a new candidate for marriage. Pure white eyes swept over Natsuo's face. Kagaya shook her head fiercely, shook away the confusing thoughts in her mind, and then took a deep breath. I can consider your proposal, but my resurrection is not perfect. Let me absorb the remaining tailed beasts first. After saying that, the veins around Kagaya's eyes stood out. Her long hair turned into sharp stingers under her control, and without hesitation, she directed them towards Natsuo. Natsuo immediately swung his black sword, and a cutting energy was directed towards the approaching white hair, cutting it. However, the hair seemed to have no end, and kept getting closer. Knowing that she was not Natsuo's opponent, Kagaya directly activated the Yamotsu Hirosaka to escape to her own dimension. How could Natsuo allow Kagaya to escape? Natsuo instantly appeared next to Kagaya, and Yamotsu Hirosaka was instantly cut down with his black sword. Kagaya looked at Natsuo in disbelief. Although she knew that Natsuo's strength was greater than her, she never thought that he could restrict her like this. Kagaya quickly moved away from Natsuo and activated the Emma to escape with Black Setsu. But Natsuo teleported to her side instantly, and the three of them disappeared from the place at the same time. She had teleported them to the dimension of the Frozen Kingdom. Kigaya was surprised that Natsuo had been able to arrive with them. Then she asked him, You have the aura of an Otsutsuki, but at the same time it's different. What are you? What? He's also Otsutsuki. Black Zetsu's expression changed suddenly. No, it shouldn't be like that. Natsuo is clearly from the Achiha clan. Wait a minute, I get it. Natsuo, you were transformed into an Otsutsuki by means of the karma, right? No. Natsuo smiled lightly. 
Namely, I obtained loot during a battle that led me to evolve in the direction of an Otsutsuki Kagaya blinked and deactivated her Byakugan. She knows that Natsuo is stronger than her, and her abilities to escape from him are also useless. She bit her lower lip, keeping silent and trying to suppress her feelings. But Black Setsu asked, Loot? Natsuo, what kind of loot would allow you to accomplish something like that? In this world, that kind of there is. Kigaya spoke softly, interrupting Black Setsu. Black Setsu was stunned for a moment, and couldn't help but said, Mother, is there really such a thing? The fruit of chakra can do this. Kigaya whispered, But to condense the chakra fruit, not only the god tree is needed, but also the corpse of an Otsutsuki, need the body of a Otsutsuki. Did you kill Hamura and Hagoromo? Black Zetsu was stunned and subconsciously asked, They are not suitable. Kigaya shook his head lightly, They are not real Otsutsuki, their biological level is not enough to be able to mature a chakra fruit. So, it should be Black Zetsu was a little surprised. How can there be other Otsutsuki in the shinobi world? There was one, Natsuo said with a slight smile. It was an Otsutsuki that was barely alive. Black Zetsu was taken aback for a moment and then exclaimed, Natsuo, did you kill Otsutsuki Asiki? Yeah, Natsuo nodded. Although he was not in his peak period, the god tree he cultivated is quite impressive. After throwing out his body, the fruit germinated immediately. What a good person, right? Black Setsu was speechless. So, actually, we're allies, right? Natsuo smiled. Now that I am Misiki's murderer, it is likely that when the Otsutsuki clan comes, they will also want to finish me off. You and I have the same interests, and we both face the same enemy. Wouldn't it be a good story to be together? Kagaya and Black Zetsu were speechless for a while, but after three seconds of silence, you can't trust anyone but yourself. My power is the only thing I can trust, Kagaya said with unwavering determination in her heart. Although she was affected by her feelings towards Natsuo, it is difficult for her to trust anyone, since she was betrayed by her children. Kagaya immediately activated the Rin Shuringen, a Manomonaka, hypergravity dimension. A massive gravitational force erupted. Even Kagaya had to kneel on the ground at this time. It was difficult to move, and it became extremely strenuous to raise her hands. She gritted her teeth as a grey bone thorn appeared in her palm. All killing ash bones. Kagaya launched an ash colored bone projectile. In this space where even she couldn't move, this technique was a deadly attack. Kagaya was shocked to realize that Natsuo, who should be in front of her, had suddenly disappeared. Instinctively, Kagaya used the Byakugan to look around. But before she could do so, she heard a cold voice from behind. Oh, so you're ready for action now. Even if you're eager to join me, isn't it a bit hasty? As he spoke, she felt a pair of hands caress her waist. At the same time, the man behind her lifted her up forcefully, Kagaya. We were in the middle of a battle, and this guy, Kagaya was dumbfounded. For a moment, Kagaya almost gave in to her instincts but then she tried to resist. But the extreme gravity became an obstacle, making it difficult for him to escape from that embarrassing situation. At the same time, Natsuo took advantage of this situation to begin to let go of her kimono. Kagaya fought her urges, gritted her teeth, her Rinshuringen burst into power, and shifted space again. Lava dimension. The burning magma below emitted incomparable waves of heat. Kagaya felt an instant relief in her body which made her control her impulses a little more, and she immediately used the all-killing ash bones. Natsuo smiled slightly, then stepped in front of Kigaya, dodging the ash bones that came out of her back. His hands never let go of her delicate waist. Black Zetsu took the opportunity to pounce on him, as if he wanted to engulf Natsuo. But the next second, Natsuo kicked him away. Taking advantage of Natsuo's moment of distraction, Kigaya attacked them with her palms. But Natsuo raised the corner of his lips, using the Asura path he formed two more arms that held her by the wrists while he brought her body even closer to him. Kigaya fought with all her might to suppress her impulses as well as free herself from Natsuo's control, displaying a variety of abilities that had not even been seen in the Naruto series. But no matter how much she struggled, Natsuo suppressed her forcefully. Black Zetsu was desperately trying to get closer, only to be kicked by Natsuo again and thrown away. At the same time Natsuo threw several black receivers that immobilize him in the distance. Kigaya gritted her teeth as Natsuo finished opening her kimono, leaving her body half-naked. Kigaya's body froze, and her resistance also stopped. However, at that moment, the sight that should have excited Natsuo and provoked some perverted thoughts, caused the primitive impulses that barely affected him, when he met Kigaya to be magnified. And judging by the current expression on Kagaya's face, which was filled with pure desire and lust. It seemed that she also shared the same feeling, the desire to procreate. They both wanted to mate. Natsuo released Kagaya's hands while she finished removing her kimono. She was fully aware of Natsuo's gaze glued to her naked body, but the one thought that primarily dominated her thoughts was the need to mate. Kagaya used her Rin Shuringen, activating the Emanomonaka, to take her and Natsuo to Otsutsuki Castle in her ice dimension. Then, without wasting any more time, she sat astride Natsuo with a slight smile on her face, forcing him to lie down on the cold floor of the castle. Meanwhile, Black Zetsu had been immobilized in the lava dimension, but Kigaya forgot about him completely. She had no intention of stopping currently, she was already past that point. Kigaya began to rub her entrance on Natsuo's crotch. She tried to get rid of Natsuo's clothes by tearing them, 
but he grabbed her wrists, forcing her to lean forward, so that her perfectly formed breasts were inches from Natsuo's face. Please, she moaned helplessly near his ears as she rubbed her entrance against him to excite him even more. For some reason, Kagaya felt that Natsuo, although he was equally aroused as her, had much more control of himself than her, which really irritated her. Kagaya used the rabbit hair needle to harden her hair, and then tear Natsuo's clothes. Instantly, all of Natsuo's clothes were destroyed. Kagaya, unable to control herself, leaned down and began to kiss his entire body, starting from his chest. As she moved down and reached for his abs, she began to lick them, fully savoring the manly aura emanating from him. This sensation of her warm lips pressing all over his body forced the fire inside Natsuo to increase even more, as he too finally gave in to her primal instincts and began to feel her with his hands. Observing Natsuo's aroused state, Kagaya moved closer to his face and gave him a lascivious French kiss, while pressing her breasts as hard as she could against his muscular chest. She dug her long nails into Natsuo's shoulders to try to press his body even more against hers, while she rubbed her wet entrance on Natsuo's shaft. Natsuo suddenly changed position and trapped her underneath him, making her lie down on her long hair. But immediately after, she wrapped her legs around him, trying to pull him inside her. Do you want me to come in? Natsuo asked. She nodded. Do you want me to slide inside you hard, pounding mercilessly? He added. Yeah. She moaned, her legs tensing even more. Natsuo tried to get up, but Kagaya immediately wrapped her arms around his neck, staying close to him. Natsuo giggled as he began to levitate with Kagaya still clinging to him. Suddenly, he spun her around as he slid her long hair in front of her, revealing her smooth, rounded rear. Using her long hair as a makeshift pillow, he made her lie face down. Natsuo pressed a hand between her shoulder blades, effectively pinning her as he pressed himself onto her, his shaft lodged securely between her plump cheeks. He grabbed one of her brown horns and pulled her head back, sealing her lips in a searing kiss. Her hips began to shake, signaling that she was more than ready for the main event, only for Natsuo to break the kiss and focus on her neck, biting hard enough to leave a proprietary mark. Are you ready for it? Natsuo whispered. Yes, she began, only to be interrupted when Natsuo slid inside her mercilessly, enjoying her wet walls. Kagaya let a delicious scream escape her, giving Natsuo the opportunity to silence her with another searing kiss. At the same time, without Natsuo activating the wrench in no Kanke, a bond with half the strength of a full bond was formed with Kagaya. Although Natsuo was surprised by this, he was more focused on the delicious way Kagaya's folds wrapped tightly around his shaft, as if they were trying to stop his invasion even though her moans vehemently disagreed with that conclusion. Without even missing a beat, Natsuo wrapped his arms around her waist and began to levitate carrying Kagaya. As they levitated, they continued to drag Kagaya's long hair. Then Natsuo trapped her body between the castle wall and his burning body. Because they were in the ice dimension, when she was pressed against the wall by Natsuo, she experienced the contrasting sensations of hot and cold, making her moan even louder. With her cheek pressed against the wall, Kagaya could barely moan as Natsuo pounded her round ass over and over again. The castle echoed with the sound of flesh hitting flesh, accompanied by the occasional spanking that Natsuo gave Kagaya because he was unable to resist the charm of her delicious rear. She simply accepted the assault, her hands pressing against the wall, digging her long nails into it, willingly taking Natsuo's shaft inside her wet opening repeatedly. She simply moaned with satisfaction every time he penetrated her. Do you like it when I use you forcefully? When you don't have the power to resist me, Natsuo said as he increased his strength, making her moan even louder. Yes, she screamed with just a hint of pain, but much more pleasure. Seeing her submission more than feeling satisfied, Natsuo only felt the desire to dominate her more, to make her even more his. Why wouldn't he do it when his primal instincts told him that she was a biologically superior being like him? Natsuo fucked her harder and harder. Still, Kagaya just moaned obediently, clearly enjoying his merciless assault, so there was no real problem. Even when Natsuo moved away from her to give her a moment to rest, she simply groaned in disappointment, urging him to continue. Since Natsuo consumed the chakra fruit, he had not been able to release all of his restraints when he was with his wives, otherwise he he might end up damaging them. But Kagaya, having also consumed the chakra fruit, had an extraordinary physique, and Natsuo no longer needed to hold back. And so he did penetrating Kagaya harder and harder, doing his best to turn her into a smiling mess. That's right, penetrate me harder. Kagaya moaned deliriously. Take me, use me, make me yours. Natsuo was surprised by the longing and desire she was able to put into her words, even when she was overcome with pleasure. Furthermore, the bond continued to strengthen, although not as much as the first time. Natsuo decided to increase the intensity even more. He pulled out of her and spun her around, grabbing her waist to lift her up once more. Hold my neck and stop floating. Natsuo ordered as he held her with one hand under her butt, and using the other to bring one of her legs over his shoulder. He repeated the movement with the other leg, sliding both hands under her butt to improve her position and enjoy the softness of her, creating a V-shape with her body, while she pressed her back against the wall. It was a perfect position. The pace was completely at Natsuo's mercy, as each time he entered her, he let her slide downwards using gravity to penetrate her even deeper. She closed her eyes as pleasure invaded her body. 
her screams slowly losing their coherence. Keep your eyes open. Natsuo ordered as his Byakugan emitted a pulse of chakra much more powerful than she could emit. If she wanted to be dominated by someone stronger because of her fear of the Otsutsuki clan, Natsuo was going to be that person. Why yes sir, she moaned in the sweet spot between fear and desire. Natsuo released all his strength aggressively invading her wet entrance each stress causing her breasts to move wildly. Her legs stiffened under the stress of the position, but she continued to moan, her body trembling, tears sliding down her cheeks, and her screams echoing through the castle. But she couldn't hide the feeling of security that shone in her beautiful white eyes. She squeezed Natsuo's neck with all her strength as each merciless thrust of his stretched her further and further, filling her to the brim. Natsuo continued to penetrate her fiercely for a while longer, until he exploded inside her, which immediately caused her to climax as well. At the same time Natsuo shared a large amount of energy with Kagaya, as his bond with her had strengthened quite quickly. Kagaya was immediately distracted by a spectacular combination of climax, and the feeling of becoming stronger after a long time. She collapsed to the ground using her long hair as a makeshift bed. So, what do you say? After getting some rest, are you ready to consider marrying into the Ichiha clan? Natsuo said with a light smile. Kagaya remained silent, still worried about the persecution of the Otsutsuki clan. But Natsuo's strength and his ability to strengthen her made Kagaya doubt. It seems like you haven't decided yet. Let me continue convincing you Natsuo lifted her chin. Then he picked up Kagaya. Kagaya changed her expression slightly. Wait, she still hadn't gotten enough rest. There is nothing to wait for. Natsuo did not hesitate and began his attack. Lava Dimension. Black Zetsu was still pinned to the mountain wall, tears welling up in his eyes. Sniff, mother, I freed you only for that bastard to intimidate you. I shouldn't have freed you at all. I'm so sorry. I'm really, really sorry Yukino and the others were outside, nervously looking towards the place where they both disappeared. In fact, because of future Sasuke, they already knew that Kagaya and Natsuo had been transported to Kagaya's dimensions. But can Natsuo really win? Yukino and the other Natsuo wives were worried. Kagaya was the strongest enemy in the shinobi world. In the blink of an eye, almost a day had passed. So what's going on now? Tsune was a little confused. What kind of battle didn't end in one day? Whether Natsuo won or lost, there should be a result. So they kept waiting, but Natsuo still didn't appear. Could it be that they appeared from somewhere else? Tsune was a little confused. Hokage Sama, that is unlikely. Atachi said calmly. If Natsuo Sama emerges victorious, he will undoubtedly come directly to the Ichiha clan. And if the enemy emerges victorious, the first thing he would do would be to cast the infinite Tsukiyomi. Compared to the small probability that the enemy will be victorious and then stop taking further actions, I think it is more likely that Natsuo Sama will be victorious, but will not be able to return to the shinobi world from the enemy's dimensions. Tsunade frowned she also thought of this matter. Obviously Itachi's guess has a high probability. And right at that moment, there was a disturbance in the surrounding space. Is here. Kakashi, who was constantly guarding, shouted. Everyone became alert, and the space was torn apart. Under everyone's gaze, Black Zetsu walked out slowly. His expression was one of disorientation and discouragement. The tension took over everyone. But before everyone took action against Black Zetsu, Natsu, Natsuo came out with Kagaya hugged around the waist. Natsuo looked around releasing Kagaya, and then smiled slightly towards Tsunade and his other wives. Hokage-sama, I have defeated Kagaya and saved the world once again. Tsunade and the others were surprised. How did you fight? It took so long, Tsunade said subconsciously. As I did. Natsuo smiled as he hugged Kagaya. Under Natsuo's not-so-discreet actions, everyone's expressions became strange. What the hell even the usually calm Itachi couldn't help but swear. Natsuo took Kagaya and his other wives back to the Ichiha clan. Once Kagaya's problem was solved, the rest had nothing to do with Natsuo. Also a day of battle with Kagaya fully releasing his strength was also a challenge for Natsuo. And although Kagaya was beautiful, in the end, Natsuo couldn't give up on reviving the Ichiha clan and stopping being with his other wives. Of course, the main reason is that Kagaya has become pregnant. The biological evolution of the Otsutsuki not only means that they will have more strength, but that the organism evolved in all aspects, and one of them is reproduction. You could say that an Otsutsuki woman takes the term hitting the target with the first shot to the extreme. After Natsuo explained the arrangements for Kagaya, Tsunade frowned, but in the end opted to go to the Hokage residence. She had to discuss what had just happened to the five great shinobi villages, and come to a conclusion. At the very least, she had to inform them so they would have an idea of what was happening. During the following months Natsuo returned to his usual routine. He continued to work hard to revive the Ichiha clan, as well as spending time with his wives and children. As for the affairs of the shinobi world, he left it in the hands of the Ichiha family reunion. During this time the children of some of his wives were also born, but the child of one of his wives from the Hayuga clan surprised him quite a bit. Offspring plus one, the comprehensive potential evaluation is 287, you get mental power plus 28. Same Akaiken, this is a technique from the world of One Piece. That gives the user complete control over all bodily parts and functions of their body. 
But what surprised him about this technique was that when adapted to the world of Naruto, it could stimulate the bloodline, and even increase the potential of a shinobi. With his level of strength it didn't help him much, but this was an ideal technique to increase the power of his wives and children. Even with more testing, he discovered that if an ordinary person practiced the technique, it could allow them to shape and manipulate chakra allowing them to become a shinobi. With this technique and the potions from the revival series, it is estimated that many of his wives will reach the cage level in the following period of time. Thus, Kagaya began to live in the Achiha clan, and because she was pregnant, she enjoyed the numerous cares that the Achiha clan provided her. And Black Setsu, as a son, also stayed with the Achiha clan. His expression was extremely apathetic. Natsuo was simply too strong. So strong that it drove him to despair. Natsuo is so strong. I guess the Otsutsuki clan's pursuers could also be solved by him, right? Kagaya whispered to herself. She had accepted her situation and had decided to trust Natsuo completely. Despite everything, Kagaya had a kind heart. It is a shame that Tenji's betrayal, as well as concern for the persecutors of the Otsutsuki clan, led her to create the White Zetsu. And then she had disagreements with her children because of this, which ended with her being sealed. Although almost a thousand years have passed without the members of the Otsutsuki clan coming to find her, she knows that it is only a matter of time before they arrive. Natsuo Natsuo who went to visit Kagaya, heard her whispers. Don't worry, you can trust me. Natsuo smiled slightly. It's not like I haven't killed an Otsutsuki before. He then took Kagaya to see the god tree that had absorbed Asiki. He also took her to the Achiha clan's main laboratory, where Kabuto and Amado were conducting multiple experiments on Yurashiki's body. Otsutsuki Yurashiki, Kagaya's expression changed slightly. Was he the one they sent to kill me? Probably. Natsuo nodded and told the story of how Yurashiki came to this timeline and being killed by him. Hearing this, Black Zetsu who was on Kagaya's sleeve immediately understood. No wonder you all discovered my plans. It's fortunate that Abito's original intention remains unchanged after finding out. Otherwise, his plan to revive his mother could have been abolished directly. Hey! Wait, it's possible that it hasn't been abolished. After all, Natsuo had thoughts about his mother. If he hadn't resurrected his mother, maybe Natsuo would have done it for him with that in mind. Black Zetsu's expression turned grim. Don't worry, I'll take care of everything from now on. Natsuo said as he hugged Kagaya from behind, while he placed his hands on her belly. Kagaya moved her lips slightly, but in the end she said nothing. But being hugged like this by Natsuo made her feel much safer and calmer. Although I'm not really sure, but I think it's best to tell you, when we left my dimensions, I felt a strange presence, one that gave me a familiar feeling. Kagaya frowned slightly and said, Isiki was killed by you, so there shouldn't be anyone familiar to me in the shinobi world. Because she was still a little confused when she returned to Natsuo, she wasn't sure if she had perceived him correctly. Furthermore, the presence disappeared immediately after they arrived. Oh, you mean that presence? Natsuo said with a slight smile. You're not wrong. I felt it too. Black Zetsu and Kigaya were shocked. Who was? He is someone very familiar to you. Natsuo said with a smile as he looked towards the horizon. Black Zetsu and Kigaya frowned. In the end, Black Zetsu couldn't help but said, Natsuo, who are you talking about? Natsuo smiled slightly. Naturally, from my rebellious son, Hagoromo. The expressions of Black Zetsu and Kagaya changed slightly. Kagaya frowned slightly. Hagoromo, is he still alive? He is not a pure Otsutsuki. He should have died of old age. She shook her head slightly. He's dead. It's impossible for him to spy on us secretly. Are you sure he's dead? Natsuo smiled slightly. I, on the other hand, think he's still alive. Natsuo, have you seen Hagoromo? Black Zetsu was surprised and asked. No. Then you Natsuo looked at Black Zetsu and interrupted him. Not to mention that Indra and Asura's chakra can reincarnate at will. Don't tell me Hagoromo can't do it. Even in your plan is the method to resurrect the deceased Ichihamadara. Couldn't Hagoromo be resurrected then? Both Kagaya and Black Zetsu changed their expressions slightly upon hearing that. In reality Natsuo knew that Hagoromo was still alive in soul form. If you think about it deeply, there are quite a few techniques that can revive the dead in the shinobi world. So why can't a legendary figure like the Sage of the Six Paths be resurrected? What you're saying makes sense, it could be possible. After hearing Natsuo's explanation, Black Zetsu frowned slightly, and his eyes were filled with fear. He didn't think of it before, but thinking about it now it is very probable. But if he really could be revived, why haven't we heard from him until now? Kagaya frowned slightly, her expression revealing some sadness. Don't worry. Natsuo murmured as he gently caressed Kagaya's back, before slowly wrapping her in his arms. I'll take care of everything your only job is to take good care of our child. Kagaya shivered a little at first, but eventually leaned gently against Natsuo, her expression showing slight relief and relaxation. After receiving the information about the whole incident from Tsunade, many leaders of the different powers went to the side of Natsuo's battlefield against the Ten Tails, and were truly shocked by the magnitude of the battle. Also the most powerful enemy, Kagaya was defeated by Natsuo and became his wife everyone is preoccupied. Facing such an enemy, how can they deal with it? They now realize that truly everyone's destiny is in Natsuo's hands. If one day it is decided at the family meeting of the Achiha clan, that it is necessary to unify the shinobi world, will they even be able to resist Natsuo? Many shinobi were willing to die for their village, 
But when that time comes, they can probably just die. And that's it. How could great powers bet their survival on the goodwill of third parties? And then there are the members of the Otsutsuki clan who can appear at any time. There is no other option. It seems that we only have to accept a fate. The various leaders of the shinobi world smiled bitterly and stopped ignoring the family reunion of the Ichiha clan. They then began to win over Natsuo's various wives by negotiating mutual benefits and bringing their various issues to the meeting. Formally recognizing the other party's right to govern them at first there was a lot of resistance from the nobles and daimyos. But because most of the shinobi supported the family reunion of the Ichiha clan, they could not cause much trouble. Furthermore, after Itachi went to visit the daimyo and nobles, they stayed in their own mansions to enjoy their riches without continuing to bother others. Under this structure, the complete unification of the shinobi world was achieved. The cunning and scheming Anoki even announced that he would pass the position of Tsuchikichi to his granddaughter Kuratsuchi, who was married to Natsuo. On the other hand, Rasa's reaction was not slow either. He immediately announced that the title of Kazakiyage would be passed on to his daughter Tamari. On the other hand, Tsunade, Terumi Mei and Nayujito were already married to Natsuo, so technically now the five cages are Natsuo's wives. The shinobi world suddenly became peaceful. Of course, there were still struggles for power and prestige, but the methods became much gentler. As the power of the family gathering of the Achiha clan began to consolidate important environmental improvement projects similar to those of Sunagaka, began to be carried out, either by Natsuo himself or by the Achiha clan's environmental modifier. On the other hand, either due to the threat of the Otsutsuki clan or other possible extraterrestrial civilizations, or to be able to colonize the western continent, Natsuo decided to expand and perfect the Achiha clan academy. Apart from providing the best teaching environment for his children, people from all over the world are now accepted as long as they can pass the evaluation. Because Natsuo's children had a connection with him, his talents were constantly improving. So entry into the Achiha clan academy was fierce competition, and only the best in the shinobi world were accepted. Due to the Akatsuki organization, Naruto was forced to remain in custody in the Achiha clan for a period of time. But as he was punished by Kishina, due to his bad behavior, this period of time was lengthened even further. And after being trapped for so long, he finally got permission to leave. After making sure that no one was following him, he immediately headed to the Achiha club. Because Naruto is now considered part of the Achiha clan, he can enjoy the Achiha club's VIP treatment free of charge. Manager, bring me three before he finished speaking. He suddenly found that the scene in front of him had changed. An old man sitting cross-legged appeared in front of him. He wore a full-length white kimono with a pattern of six black magatamas around a high collar. He had a pair of horn-like protrusions extending from both sides of his forehead, and a red rinnegan-like mark in the center of his forehead. He slowly opened his eyes revealing the rinnegan. I'm sage of six paths. Hagoromo voice was deep with a unique charm. Chart of destiny. The most dangerous moment in the shinobi world has not yet passed away, and your destiny has not yet ended. The shadow of Otsutsuki Kagai still hangs over the world, and Ichiha Natsuo's mind is still unclear. As the chart of destiny, you have to wait a minute. Naruto said suddenly, interrupting Hagoromo narration. Um, do you have any questions? Hagoromo was taken aback. Grandpa, although I don't know what you want to do with me, can you come back to me in a few hours? Naruto said seriously. I'm in a bit of a hurry right now. If we wait any longer, maybe the pretty girls have already been chosen by others. Besides, the time my mother gave me to walk outside is limited. I don't want to waste it listening to the talks of an old man like you. So, shall we talk about it in a few hours? Hagoromo couldn't help but be silent. How is this child of destiny different from the child of destiny I imagined? After 10 seconds of silence, he continued speaking. Young man, the existence of the world is in grave danger. Only you and another selected young man can face that powerful enemy together. Otherwise, the world will be completely destroyed and all shinobi will perish. This guy actually ignored me and continued talking on his own. Naruto widened his eyes and said bluntly, Grandpa, let me out. Child of destiny, you will bring unprecedented peace to the world. I've had to beg my mother to let me go out. Could you not waste my time? This is your destiny. You shoulder the hope of the world. Old man, I'm serious. If you don't let me out, I'm going to hit you. Don't think that because you're older I won't hit you. Hagoromo. Hagoromo was so angry that he wanted to throw something. How can this child of destiny be so what about the reincarnation of Asura? The world is at the point of life and death but you only think about the club house. Hagoromo looked at Naruto with wide eyes. There's nothing that serious. Naruto curled his lips. Months ago, Tsunade Sensei told me in Sasuke that we were the hope to save the world. He took us to see the Akatsuki attack. But in the end, we could only watch from a distance and couldn't do anything. We already have brother Natsuo. Where is the danger to the world? Naruto dismissed Hagoromo's words. When Tsunade told Naruto that he and Sasuke were the saviors of the world, Naruto was so excited that he even gave up the idea of escaping to go to the club and decided to train hard. But after watching the battle with the Akatsuki members, he realized that where is the savior of the world? How is it possible that he couldn't even compete with the enemy? The saviors of the world and stuff, it's just nonsense. Naruto gritted his teeth. I have wasted so many opportunities to go to the club ass because of this. As a result, when it comes to fighting, 
It's nothing to do with me. What child of destiny or anything? Not even dogs would believe that. Also, where is the crisis in the world now? If there is a real crisis, we have brother Natsuo. Now the entire world is under the rule of the Achiha clan, and peace has been achieved. Naruto even tested the strength of his new sister-in-law, Kagaya, along with Sasuke. She just released pressure with her bike again, and made them lie down on the ground. If she is like this, then Natsuo, who defeated her, she must be even stronger. An enemy who can defeat Natsuo, does not exist. What if the person who endangers the world is Natsuo? Hagoromo took a deep breath. Brother Natsuo has endangered the world. Naruto's expression changed slightly. That's right. Hagoromo nodded and said, You may not know, back then in my time. He slowly told Naruto about the Kagaya era. He also told about his bitter fight with Kagaya in order to save the world. Kagaya is still an uncontrollable threat. That Natsuo you trust has actually become a member of the Otsutsuki clan. Hagoromo whispered, I saw them when they came out. I'm not wrong, that's definitely the aura of an Otsutsuki. They are Otsutsuki. They are the enemies of the world. After hearing Hagoromo's words, Naruto scratched his chin thoughtfully. Enemies of the world. That's right. Hagoromo said without hesitation. But Naruto said, Old man, since you said you saw it with your own eyes. Why didn't you rush up and fight him? I actually wanted to go up. But I saw him and my mother walking together, holding hands obviously they have formed an alliance. Hagoromo sighed softly. Facing two experts at the same time, even I would have difficulty. In fact, he was present after Kagaya was freed. And he silently watched the battle between Natsuo and Kagaya. He originally thought that with Natsuo around, Kagaya could be defeated and sealed again. And in case any problem occurred, he could quickly give his six path chakra to help him. But who knew that when he saw them again, he would see Natsuo appear with Kagaya in her arms. Hagoromo was stunned, he almost thought that Natsuo was ready to start harvesting the world's chakra together with Kagaya. Fortunately, this most dangerous ending did not appear in the end. Still, he couldn't let them continue like this. So, I need you to help me stop Kagaya, Hagoromo said in a deep voice. Then, I can quickly take care of Natsuo, and then go help you guys. We, Naruto was taken aback. Who we are? You, and Sasuke. Hagoromo said seriously, You have the chakra of my children Asura and Indra. I will give you power so you can seal Kagaya. Naruto's expression changed, and he was caught in a tangle. His expression changed as he walked back and forth in that illusory space, full of indecision. Finally, he raised his head and said, Grandpa, are you sure brother Natsuo is the enemy of the shinobi world? Of course. Hagoromo said without hesitation, he carries the blood of the Otsutsuki. He may have even been replaced by an Otsutsuki before you met him. If you don't believe me, you can ask Gamamaro. Oh, I mean the Sage of the Toads on Mount Mayaboku. Oh, I almost forgot. You are not the heir of the Toads, but it doesn't matter. The Forest Sage Shikotsu also knows about this. You can summon one to ask him. He spoke with complete conviction, and his expression was very natural. It was obvious that he wasn't lying. Naruto sighed softly. It seems that you are telling the truth, okay? I accept your power to help you defeat the enemies of the shinobi world. Young people are easy to teach. Hagoromo smiled happily, looked at Naruto who was a little depressed, and tried to comfort him. Don't worry. I don't intend to kill Natsuo. Otsutsuki are hard to kill anyway. My goal is to seal him. Oh, that's good. Naruto's expression became relaxed. Hagoromo smiled slightly, stretched out his hand, and held Naruto's palm. Soon, a white pattern appeared on Naruto's hand. Is this the Yang power of six paths? Naruto felt the power all over his body, his eyes filled with excitement. That's right, when combined with the Yin power of the six paths, you can release the six paths technique Chibaku Tensei. That can seal Kagaya. Hagoromo explained looking a little tired. Okay, I'll let you out. You have to be careful, my chakra will be seen by Kagaya and Natsuo's eyes, so we have to wait for an opportunity, when the two of them are not together. I've planned everything, I'm sure we can win, okay? Naruto nodded vigorously. In the next instant, the illusion disappeared. Naruto appears again in the Achiha clubhouse. Looking at the manager who had just arrived, he immediately understood although he had been interacting with the Sage of Six Baths for a long time. It seemed like it had only been an instant in the real world. So, oh, an important client. The manager was excited and extended an invitation. Come on, Lily's been waiting for you. She was wondering why you hadn't come in so long. She thought maybe you'd fallen in love with another woman. Naruto turned around and hurried out, shouting at the manager. Sorry. I have something urgent to do now. Next time I'll visit her for sure. The manager was puzzled. How could a regular customer leave so quickly? Had I done something wrong? But Naruto didn't care about the manager's concerns. He crossed streets and alleys, and soon arrived at the main mansion of the Ichiha clan. Bang. He kicked the door and went in, yelling, Brother Natsuo, I want to report. There is a bastard who calls himself the Sage of the Six Paths, who was plotting against you. Brother Natsuo, listen to me. Naruto said excitedly, There is a guy named Sage of Six Paths who wants to deal with you. Fortunately, he is stupid enough to be tricked by me. Hey, Sasuke, why are you here? As he spoke, Naruto belatedly noticed the figure of the little friend next to him. Shem PH, of course it is to inform brother Natsuo. Sasuke raised his head proudly, 
The matter of the Sage of the Six Parts was a piece of cake for me. I easily fooled him, gained his trust, and now I am reporting to Brother Natsuo. And well, it's understandable that the Sage of the Six Parts needs to work with Sasuke. Naruto thought. But Sasuke, have you become a trader too? Naruto's eyes widened. I thought that only people like me would be spies or traders. But it turns out that you, who are so serious, have also become a trader. Sasuke's mouth twitched. In terms of lineage, both Natsuo and I are Ichiha. We've been together for years. We're like brothers. That sage of six paths just met me once, why should I believe his words? Naruto was slightly silent. What he said made sense so, why would sage of six paths trust us? Is he out of his mind? The two continued arguing, and Natsuo listened with amusement. The sage of the six paths trying to turn Naruto and Sasuke into his allies to fight him together. This is really the sage of six parts trust Naruto and Sasuke because of destiny. Because Hagoromo reached such a high level of power, he was able to perceive the fate of the world. Plus he has the help of Gamamaru. But it seems that he can't perceive it clearly, otherwise he would have contacted Chuchi. Sage of six parts sealed Kagaya as fate would have it. The reincarnations of Asura and Indra according to fate fought for countless generations. Destiny's child should have been on the side of the Sage of Six Parts. But technically I have raised Naruto and Sasuke since they were little. It is impossible for them to let themselves be affected so easily by fate and no longer trust me. Natsuo couldn't help but smile when listening to the conversation. One moment, the Sage of the Six Parts was trying to convert Naruto, and the next, Naruto was coming to rat him out. But Naruto and Sasuke didn't waste any time. They both began to report what happened. Naruto, brother Natsuo. I managed to trick the Sage of the Six Parts into sharing the Yang power of the Six Parts with me. Sasuke, I obtained the Yin power of the Six Parts. Naruto, he says that only by combining my power and Sasuke's can we seal sister-in-law Kagaya. Sasuke, he also mentioned that you and sister-in-law Kagaya are Rotsutsuki and enemies of the world. But personally, I don't believe it. Naruto, brother Natsuo, even if you really are an enemy of the world, I will always be on your side. Sasuke, yes, we will help you. Naruto, yes, brother Natsuo. How about we trick that idiot called the Sage of the Six Parts? Lure him out, and then confront him together. Sasuke. I think it's okay, I'll call my brother and my teacher to come. I'll pretend they are the reinforcements I found. That stupid Sage of the Six Paths should believe it. After a few words, Naruto and Sasuke decided on a perfect plan of action. However, Natsuo shook his head and pointed to the yin and yang marks on Naruto and Sasuke's hands. Although this chakra has no tricks, it is connected to the Sage of the Six Paths. So your words have been heard by him, and an ambush is impossible. Naruto and Sasuke looked at each other with regret on their faces. They didn't expect that the foolish sage of the six paths, who was so bold as to instigate them, would have these abilities. If they had known before, they should be more cautious and pass the information to brother Natsuo with coded words or gestures. Don't worry, that sage of the six paths is no match for me. Natsuo smiled slightly, but it's surprising that he tried to instigate you guys. He seems to be running out of ideas. So let's face it head on. Some things need to be resolved and finished early. With that said, he stood up directly. Then, he flew directly over the Kanoha wall, and finally arrived at a deserted wooded area. Right here Hagoromo come out, maybe we can talk. Natsuo smiled slightly. However, there was no response. Natsuo shook his head. I'm giving you a chance now. Kagaya stays in the main house of the Achiha clan honestly. I'm alone now. This should show you my sincerity. As he said that, he raised his hand in the direction of a giant tree. Shinra Tensei. Boom. A huge explosion sounded. Soon, an old man with an awkward expression floated out. It's not that I'm not showing sincerity. Hagoromo sighed. This old man just Natsuo raised an eyebrow. Don't you have the face to face me? Hagoromo sighed again and nodded. After all, he didn't expect this. The child of destiny he actually deserted. For a moment, the atmosphere was extremely awkward. The child of destiny had betrayed his destiny. This is incredible. Natsuo looked at the embarrassed old man, remaining silent and giving him enough time to accept this fact. However, Hagoromo was no ordinary person. He quickly said, Natsuo, if my eyes don't deceive me, you're also from the Otsutsuki clan, right? Although it was a question, his tone was absolutely confident. That's right, Natsuo nodded. Earlier, I got rid of an individual named Otsutsuki Asiki, ate his chakra fruit, and transformed into Otsutsuki. So, you are a native of the Shinobi world. Naturally, I'm of the Ichiha clan. Hagoromo sighed. The Otsutsuki clan is a threat to the Shinobi world. I'm so sorry to have to eliminate both you and my mother, don't say that. Natsuo smiled slightly. I don't want to cause trouble in my own home. Although Kigaya wishes to continue cultivating god trees, I don't care about this matter. Don't you want to grow god trees? Hagoromo was taken aback. I don't want to. Natsuo said calmly. The power of the chakra fruit was vast, and could significantly increase a person's potential. Even for Natsuo, it was useful. However, growing god trees was too complicated. Not only would it cause damage to the earth, 
that it would also take an astronomical time for the God Tree to absorb enough natural energy. Furthermore, he had promised Chuchi that he would free the God Tree from the control of the Otsutsuki clan. Instead of wasting time waiting for the Chakra Fruit to ripen, he might as well continue reviving the Acher clan. During that time how much could a Chakra Fruit improve him compared to his system? Seeing Natsuo's seriousness, Hagoromo was somewhat skeptical. He himself had struggled internally for a long time, before rejecting the temptation to harvest natural energy from the world, choosing to separate the Jurubi into the Nine-Tailed Beasts. How can Natsuo not care? If you don't use the God Tree, perhaps we can avoid conflicts, Hagoromo pondered for a while and said. But Mother must be sealed. Looking at Natsuo's frown, he said seriously, Mother will never stop wanting to obtain the Chakra Fruit. I can't allow such a possibility to happen. I will not allow anyone to put their hands on my wife. Natsuo shook his head. Natsuo, she is too dangerous. You have no idea of her power. Hagoromo spoke in a deep voice as his chakra stirred, generating wind. Her existence is a threat to the shinobi world, and even to your wives and children. Why do you think I have no idea of her power? Natsuo curled his lips. I have been fighting her for a long time. Her strength is indeed very strong. She won't beg for mercy in five consecutive battles with me. I have experienced hundreds of battles, and she is the only one. But what does it matter? In the sixth battle, didn't she also start begging for mercy? So you don't need to worry about this. I can overpower her without any problems. Hagoromo was silent for a moment, feeling that the battles Natsuo mentioned had a slight difference from the ones he thought of. But in the next instant, Hagoromo's body went from its illusory state to instantly solidifying. One of the truth-seeking ball transformed into a dual-headed Shikujo, and another transformed into the sword of Nunaboko. Hagoromo slowly raised the sword of Nunaboko in his hand and pointed it at Natsuo, saying, It seems that words alone cannot convince you. In fact, words are rarely enough. Natsuo curled his lips. But you, the founder of the Ninchu who advocated mutual understanding to achieve peace, still resort to violence. That surprises me. Hagoromo remained silent. It's a pity, even if he is like this, he still can't understand Natsuo. But do you really want to fight me? Natsuo asked curiously. Now that Kagaya is pregnant with my child, you can call me father. Attack your own father. Isn't that a bit implied? Hagoromo, who seemed to be qualified to be Natsuo's grandfather, froze at Natsuo's words. However, in the next moment his face became serious. There's nothing more to talk about. After defeating you, I still have to take care of my mother. In the next instant, his sword of Nunaboko lunged forward. At the same time, Natsuo activated the Rinnegan and the Byakugan, in addition to forming a sword with a true seeking ball. Then the sword stopped in front of Natsuo without being able to move forward. Limbo, border jail. Natsuo shook his head slightly. Hagoromo, Hagoromo. What did I do to make you disrespect me so much? Not only do you refuse to call me dad, you even attack me. You are a rebellious son. In the next instant, Hagoromo felt a sense of danger. His expression changed slightly as he could vaguely see a figure similar to Natsuo stopping his sword of Nunaboko. And three more figures that were approaching his position at incredible speed. Since you are a rebellious son, don't blame me for enforcing family discipline. In the next second, the shadow of Natsuo closest to Hagoromo launched an attack. Hagoromo hurriedly used his Shikujo to try to block the attack, but before he could move the Shikujo, the attack had already passed through his defense and hit him. Boom. The attack imbued with natural energy caused him great damage, but because his body was made of chakra, no visible wounds were left. Hagoromo suppressed the discomfort and tried to use the sword of Nunaboko to attack Natsuo. But before he could finish swinging the sword, Natsuo's shadows launched one attack after another. Boom, boom, boom. The sword slashes seemed to be covered in golden flames, but each slash being imbued with natural energy pierced Hagoromo's defenses. Not only that, every time Hagoromo was thrown away, Natsuo used the Amenite Jakara to appear at his side. He was being knocked back and forth and flying uncontrollably. I'm actually being suppressed by him. I don't even have a chance to fight back. Hagoromo opened his eyes in surprise. After being beaten for so long, he hadn't even managed to touch Natsuo. Does this guy really have to be so exaggerated? I can't help it. It looks like I have to show some whole cards. He shook his head and, risking a sword cut to the back, hit the ground hard. The next moment a huge summoning circle appears. A giant toad appeared out of nowhere. He was as big as a small mountain. He wears a teacher's hat with tassels and an orb on top. He also has a necklace with a big purple ball. With the word oil gamamaru. I need your strength. Hagoromo shouted. Hey, I still have to go to the battlefield in person in the end. Gamamaru sighed softly. The big toad on Mount Maiboku Natsuo called his lips. This is the toad that manipulated the Sage of the Six Parts into sealing his mother, and also the toad that Jiraiya, Naruto, and others met while he pretended to have dementia and told them about the prophecies in his dreams. At the same time, it is the most powerful of Mount Mayaboku. Gamamaru, help me hold him back. Hagoromo did not hesitate to make seals. I know. Gamamaru inhaled deeply and then exhaled forcefully. Sage art. Wind release dust cloud. Gamamaru exhaled a huge cloud of dust. Natsuo narrowed his eyes slightly and Susanoo appeared on his body. He then swung his sword strongly. However, even though this toad had an old and senile appearance, it demonstrated impressive speed, jumping directly a thousand meters away. 
while continuing to release the cloud of dust. His super cage level strength almost reaching the six parts level. Natsuo thought to himself. At the same time Hagoromo used the dust cloud to hide. I have not finished. Hagoromo roared and hit the ground again in fury, a summoning array similar to the one before emerged. But this time, it was Katsaya's clone who appeared. Likewise, Katsaya was also at the peak of the super cage level, one step away from the six parts level. Oh, you're Tsune's husband. I don't really want to fight you. Katsaya's voice was soft, with a feeling of being weak and easy to intimidate. But I'm sorry, the Sage of the Six Parts has a pact with our three sacred places to join forces against an enemy that threatens the world. So, tongue tooth sticky acid. Katsaya released an acidic paste from his mouth that spread over a wide area. Natsuo immediately released the Suzunu, then used the Geppo to accelerate his flight speed, and move away from the attack range. Meanwhile, Hagoromo struck the ground again. Immediately after, the White Snake Sage appeared. This kid is close to a Rauchi cave. The White Snake Sage sighed softly. Kid Natsuo, in a few days, the Snake Princesses will begin to have offspring. I ask you to be compassionate to me. But despite her words, the snake attacked without hesitation. The three great wise regions are gathered. Natsuo quickly dodged the attacks while joking. Do you have anything else, Hagoromo? Of course. Hagoromo inhaled deeply, and his chakra suddenly fled. It was a chakra of even greater scale than the three great sages summoning. He made a series of extremely complex seals. However, as his gestures progressed, an extremely cold aura began to emanate from him and his massive chakra suddenly expanded. Halo after halo of pale blue light appeared, dense and numerous as if they were endless. But in the next moment, those blue halos quickly solidified into human shapes. Countless figures appeared before Natsuo. Among them, there were some figures that were unmistakably familiar to him. Ichiha Madara, Senju Hashirama, Senju Toborama, Saratobi Hiruzen. At the same time, there is a large group of people Natsuo has heard of but never met, such as Keito Dan. Hatik Sakumo, 3rd Rakage, 2nd Mizukage, 1st Kazakiage, and this group of people barely occupied a small part of the numerous figures. This group of people is Natsuo squinted his eyes inside softly. The most powerful shinobi who have died over the years in the shinobi world. That's right, this is the accumulated strength of the shinobi world over the years. Hagoromo finally stopped moving, showing a proud smile. This was his real ace up his sleeve. It's really a lot of people. Natsuo said with emotion. The shinobi summoned by Hagoromo stood still, with dull expressions forming a huge square formation, bringing a sense of austerity. And the weakest among them were Jonan level. No wonder Hagoromo considered them his card up his sleeve. There are also many cage level and even super cage level shinobi. Ichiha Madara and Senju Hashirama are both super cage level shinobi. They are approximately the strongest in the history of the shinobi world aside from Otsutsuki. But there have also been some super cage level shinobi throughout history. The clan emblems of those super cage level shinobi are Senju, Ichiha, Yuzumaki, Hayuga or another distinguished clan. Could there be reincarnations of Indra and Asura among them? Natsuo's lips called up. Indra and Asura's chakra had been entangling the entire shinobi world in their confrontation and perhaps they would continue to do so even after Naruto and Sasuke. Hey, if you think about it, Natsuo stroked his chin. By continuing to allow Indra and Asura's chakra to reincarnate isn't it a stable way to create a large number of high-level shinobi? Although it could not be stated with certainty that the reincarnation of both of them could ascend to the super cage level. But reaching the cage level is a very certain thing. Hagoromo was slightly silent upon hearing this. Thinking about it further, the continuous wars in the shinobi world were not led by you secretly, right? Natsuo raised his brows. You are really insidious. Although cruel wars caused many losses, they also elevated many shinobi, improving their skills. Apparently, Hagoromo, feeling the guidance of destiny, knows the need to continue creating powerful warriors. But he only thinks that it is due to the possible invasion of the Otsutsuki clan. That's why he gradually established the current structure of the shinobi world. Hagoromo pursed his lips slightly and said, I have not encouraged wars in the shinobi world. Then why did you deliberately allow the reincarnations of Indra and Asura to clash for generations? Natsuo raised his eyebrows. Hagoromo was silent. No matter what, Natsuo, you can't win. Hagoromo said in a low voice. With the accumulation of so many years, no one is my opponent. Then let's try it! Exclamation point Natsuo laughed, and instead of retreating, he went straight to meet the large group of shinobi. Hagoromo had a dignified expression and waved his hand. Countless shinobi furiously rushed towards Natsuo. Natsuo transformed another truth-seeking ball into another sword. He breathed golden fire from his mouth, before both swords in his hands became covered in golden flames. In an instant, a man dressed as a monk shouted angrily, and behind him the spirit of the thousand-armed cannon appeared, launching a fist of golden chakra. This was the chief monk of a certain generation of the Fire Temple. Beside him, a swordsman dressed as a samurai, grasping the handle of his sword, drew it in one fell swoop. This was a general from the land of Iron. Next to them was a shinobi with red hair, with several golden chains coming out of his back, this was the leader of the Yuzumaki clan of a certain generation. However, Natsuo's counterattack was extremely easy. With a sword slash, he cut down the spirit of the thousand-armed cannon along with the monk inside. Then, with a simple thrust he broke the samurai's katana and pierced him directly. 
Immediately afterwards, he released the pressure of his Byakugan on the leader of the Yuzumaki clan, leaving him paralyzed, before activating the Amaterasu, burning him to ashes on the other hand, cage level shinobi couldn't have any impact on Natsuo. Natsuo captured one of the shinobi summoned by Hagoromo, and then activated the human path. It feels similar to impure world reincarnation. It also suppresses the will of the soul itself, and controls the opponent's general actions. It also uses the instinct of the soul to make up for everything else. But the strength of reincarnation is much greater than that of impure world reincarnation. Not only is there a gap in strength, but they can also use Senjutsu Chakra all souls summoned by Hagoromo carry Senjutsu Chakra. But just like the body of the impure world reincarnation, these souls will also be restricted by the power of the true seeking ball, as well as the human path of the Rinnegan. Additionally, the sun breathing adapted to natural energy causes even more damage with the sword made by the true seeking ball. Although the leader of the Yuzumaki clan, burned by Amaterasu, recovered easily, the samurai, the monk as well as all the souls attacked by Natsuo's swords, no longer came back to life, they make excellent consumables, which is why you try to entice Naruto and Sasuke to be your helpers. Natsuo commented lightly, Hagoromo was silent, souls were really consumable. Although the strength is not bad, in front of the six parts level, the cage level is just a little bit bigger and Hagoromo hearts ache, but even if it is a big consumption, it is worth it. Hagoromo said with determination, as long as it has an effect, it is not a waste. Even if it only consumed a little bit of Natsuo's chakra, it made sense. Besides, in the next moment, someone familiar with an Achiha clan symbol suddenly jumped out, and several shadows detached themselves from his body, rushing towards Natsuo. Achiha Madara, are you here to join in the fun? Natsuo chuckled as he killed all the shadows of the limbo. Border jail that Achiha Madara had just separated. I just failed, but still, I have to face you again. It's really very unpleasant. The corner of Madara's mouth twitched, but her body moved involuntarily. As he attacked, his eyes were full of resentment. Obviously, he couldn't help himself. However, unlike other souls who attacked unconsciously, he showed a certain autonomy. Although Hagoromo took control to a certain extent of the pure land, there are many rules he cannot change. Because the stronger a shinobi is, his spiritual energy becomes much more powerful, and the pure land is a mechanism of the world where it erodes that energy, until the soul can reincarnate again. As the first soul at the six parts level to reach the pure land, Hagoromo did not lose consciousness, and was therefore able to take control of the place. And so that both Indra and Asura continue reincarnated, he made them stay in purgatory, denying their entry to the pure land, this together with his obsession, and when certain conditions are met, they allow their reincarnation. On the other hand, because Madara managed to reach the level of the six parts for a short period of time, many of the rules of the pure land do not affect him, which allowed him to have a certain degree of freedom. After being summoned by Hagoromo, Natsuo, who are you fighting with now? Who is that person? Madara couldn't help asking. I think it looks a bit like Sage of Six Paths. Natsuo chuckled and said, It doesn't look like it. It's the Sage of the Six Paths he's using a technique similar to impure world reincarnation to fight me. It really is the Sage of the Six Paths, so the Sage of the Six Paths also resorts to such despicable techniques as the damn Toborama. Madara grumbled, No wonder the Shinobi world hasn't known peace for so many years. There's no hope when the top is as despicable as Toborama. Well, that was a little excessive. Although Hagoromo has allowed certain things, his true intention is to protect the Shinobi world. Although he confused the guidance of destiny regarding the war between universes, with the arrival of the Otsutsuki clan, at least he did not deliberately subvert the peace. But Natsuo didn't say anything more about it. After all, Madara was evidently upset at being controlled, and had a right to be angry at the Sage of the Six Paths. Natsuo, what happened to my Eye of the Moon plan? Did it really fail? Madara asked. Compared to the current situation, Madara was more interested in knowing how his plan for peace was progressing. Yes, it failed. Your plan was a conspiracy by Black Zetsu from the beginning. Natsuo did not mind revealing the truth to him, satisfying the wish for peace of this pitiful man who had been thinking about his plan until his death. So in the end, I'm just a failure I thought I had at least surpassed Hashirama. Madara smiled wryly. Natsuo shrugged. Actually, you are stronger than the first Hokage. It's not just the problem that the peace was broken after he died, even in terms of current strength look. Saying that, he launched a sword slash towards the side. Hashirama was using his wood release to launch an attack at Natsuo, but was destroyed by Natsuo's slash, before sending him flying into the distance. Although you are controlled to a certain extent, at least you are the only one who was able to maintain your consciousness. In fact, if you were given more time you could compete for control of the pure land just like Hagoromo. Natsuo said with a shrug, really? Madara sighed bitterly. Looking at the huge battlefield, Madara couldn't help but said wryly, can the world really be peaceful? I think there is still hope for peace. Natsuo said as he continued to fight. For example, now a kind of peace has been established under the family reunion of the Achiha clan. Natsuo then explained the recent changes in the shinobi world under the new government system, as well as the cessation of hostilities in different parts of the world. Even many of the rights of the daimyos are now managed by the various shinobi villages, greatly improving the lives of all people. Madara listened attentively, his eyes shining. Good very, good excellent. Although the current peace seemed perfect, 
The reality of whether it could be maintained was another story. If Natsuo disappears at some point, the fights that would occur between the great nations would turn many things into total chaos. But Madara was still smiling happily. For him, the important thing was not whether peace could continue, but that there was still a group of shinobi who yearned for peace and worked hard towards it. That was enough. Natsuo, I'll help you. Madara spoke seriously and with determination. Let's take advantage of this opportunity. With that, he activated his Rinnegan releasing a large amount of chakra. The next second, his body that was attacking Natsuo suddenly stopped. And not just him, the other shinobi who were attacking also stopped, as if they had suddenly disconnected. Hagoromo's expression changed, and his chakra was released like crazy. Summoning an army of thousands of souls sounded imposing. But in reality, even with studying the technique for many years, simultaneously controlling so many high-level shinobi was a difficult task. Let alone Madara, who was no ordinary super cage. He had truly reached the level of six parts, although his power had fallen when he died. Although Hagoromo had control over the pure land, Madara who had reached the level of the six parts, also had this qualification. The enormous pupil power of the Rinnegan exploded as Madara's soul tried to seize control of Hagoromo's authority at any cost and said through clenched teeth. Seize the opportunity Natsuo. But actually, it's not necessary. Natsuo sighed softly and stopped his actions. I was just trying out some of my techniques for a while. If I really wanted to deal with this group of people, it would be very easy. The next moment the immense chakra in Natsuo's body poured out frantically to create a vast mass of expanding chaos. Expansive true seeking ball. In the blink of an eye, it completely devoured the soul army. From a distance, Hagoromo looked at Natsuo with a grim expression, his eyes reflecting shock and fear. It must be known that if it were not for Hagoromo's constant interference, many of the souls would have continued with the world cycle of reincarnation. And now his army of thousands of souls accumulated over many years, were swallowed up in the blink of an eye. Except for Achiha Madara, Senju Hashirama, Senju Toborama and other souls that Natsuo deliberately kept, all other souls disappeared. Even the three great sages, although they were not directly killed by Natsuo's attack, realized the immediate danger and released the invocation, retreating instantly. In an instant, the situation changed drastically. What's the situation with your chakra amount? Hagoromo was left in a state of shock. Of course, because of all the system rewards during this time, Natsuo's chakra level was really terrifying. Natsuo Madara's expression changed. He also possesses the true seeking balls, and can understand the difficulty of Natsuo's operation at this moment. Oh, oh, it's really amazing. And at this time Hashirama looked around, touched his head and smiled. Wow, you've gotten a lot stronger since the last time my brother and I saw you. Damn, how did you get this power? Tobarama gritted his teeth. How did that evil Ichiha accomplish all this? Oh, Hashirama, you can talk too. Madara was taken aback. Yeah, his control over us seems to have been lifted. Hashirama shrugged. Although even I didn't expect that after I died, I could come to this world twice being controlled is not a pleasant experience. Hagoromo was no longer suppressing their souls, so they naturally regained some autonomy as well. Continuing to suppress Hashirama and the others didn't make much sense. After all, the soul army had been eliminated in an instant by Natsuo. What could a handful of people do now? They looked at the huge hole that was once flat land, feeling deeply moved. In the previous battle, although they had been controlled by Hagoromo, it did not affect their perception, so they naturally also saw Natsuo's actions. Have you decided to stop resisting your father, Hagoromo? Natsuo frowned, looking at Hagoromo. What's the point of me continuing to persist? Hagoromo smiled wryly. Don't you want to try? Natsuo raised an eyebrow. Maybe I've exhausted too much chakra and can't beat you. Who knows? The corner of Hagoromo's mouth twitched. Although I don't have my mother's Byakugan, I'm not that blind the pressure emanating from your body hasn't decreased much. Natsuo smiled and glanced at Hagoromo out of the corner of his eye. Looks like the naughty boy is finally going to give up however, such an unfilial child still deserves to receive his well-deserved punishment. So, back in number one. Sai. The next moment, before Hagoromo's astonished gaze, his arms immobilized behind his back. Then Natsuo kicked him and sent him flying. His disgusting face collided with the ground, and Natsuo stomped on it, rubbing it vigorously against the ground in fact. There are no enemies in the world that can challenge Natsuo, and there is no one worthy of being called an enemy by Natsuo. Although this battle did not make a big splash in the shinobi world, it has great significance. The shinobi world has completely lost the ability to resist Natsuo. After teaching Hagoromo a lesson, Natsuo took him to the Acheha clan, and then let Kagaya deal with him directly. Finally, under the insistence of most of Natsuo's wives who were unhappy with Hagoromo's attack on Natsuo, Kagaya decided that Hagoromo would experience the same fate as her by being sealed. Then, Natsuo acted directly. Since then, there was another moon, which is the prison of the Sage of the Six Baths. Natsuo's wives were moved for a moment, and couldn't help but bring out their children to give them examples with Hagoromo's case, warning them not to misbehave. If they misbehaved, their dad would seal them and throw them into the sky. With so many Achiha children, many of them were mischievous, especially the group of children that gathers around Goro. But after being taken away by their own mothers and seeing Hagoromo being sealed, they became so scared that they never dared to misbehave again. In an instant, discipline in the Achiha clan improved significantly. 
On the other hand, Hagoromo didn't really resist the punishment much. After so long he wanted to find a way to atone. Furthermore, once Natsuo defeated him, he was no longer influenced by the fate of the universe. Although fate is something magical that can greatly help those who possess it, enduring the fate of an entire universe made Hagoromo inadvertently become a puppet of fate. Now he just realized that many of his decisions were very impulsive. Before being sealed, Hagoromo still warned Natsuo about the danger of the Otsutsuki clan and that he should be prepared. And if he finds himself overwhelmed by them, he can free him. He will fight with all his strength to face the enemy. After the confrontation, he will agree to be sealed again. Natsuo was speechless at this, and then, with a quick gesture, he sealed the Holy Mother who was still speaking to him. The last obstacle of the Shinobi world has been solved by me. According to the timeline, the Otsutsuki clan will not appear until the era of Boruto, which is less than 20 years away. In fact, the Otsutsuki that will arrive in the Boruto era, none of them will be a match for me. In short, the current shinobi world is already under my control, so the fate of the world will begin to correct itself and begin to gather around me so. Looks like I have to visit Chuchi again, but before that, it's time to start being more proactive in running the shinobi world. Natsuo's eyes shone brightly as he looked at a map of the world, and stabbed a kunai into the shinobi continent. Natsuo decided to accelerate the development of the shinobi world. Now that he had eliminated all the remaining obstacles, he must make the shinobi world enter the interstellar era. As a higher level combat power, his universe may have the advantage. But a war between civilizations involves many more things. To achieve this, it was necessary to ensure that the power and wealth of the world were used correctly. So, although Itachi already warned the nobles and daimyos, but in this distorted world, many people still believe that they should be ruled by noble blood. So the first step must be, destroy the current political structure. Natsuo raised the corner of his mouth. The next day, at the Ichiha clan family meeting, there was a discussion about whether the existence of the daimyo is beneficial or useless. If it is beneficial, where does its value lie? Is it worth the resource consumption it requires? If it's useless, what should we do with them? Should we exterminate them all? Although it was just an argument, the entire shinobi world was stunned upon hearing it. Natsuo, he actually wants to attack the daimyo. This news spread to the ears of all the leaders of the shinobi world. During the Achiha clan family meeting, Natsuo's numerous wives were also stumped by the argument. Was the daimyo useful? Was it beneficial? Of course he had value. He everyone tried to respond instinctively, but couldn't find the right words. Because daimyo is not an irreplaceable existence at all, managing people only required certain officials. The permanent population of Kanoha did not differ much from the population of the capital city of the Land of Fire. And the Hokage mainly handled the internal disputes of the village, resolved the external conflicts of other villages, and also managed the civilians in an orderly manner. It wasn't difficult at all. So what is the existence value of daimyo? Delay the delivery of supplies to the shinobi villages. Corruption of funds from various sources. Spending on expensive luxuries to keep the makers of those luxuries happy. The daimyo it really didn't seem to make much sense, did it? So what should they do? Of course, if you think about it, stabilize a country, become a spiritual symbol for the people, unify the nation and summon the population to defend the homeland, donate money and resources. It could be considered a feature, albeit grudgingly. But here's the problem. With the improvement of the living environment by the Achiha clan's family gathering, and Natsuo's military intimidation on the shinobi continent, where was there room for a large-scale war between shinobi villages? Totally useless. So since daimyos are useless, they are no longer needed. Natsuo had only taken the first step, and Tsunade and Jukino did not hesitate to move forward, actively leading Kanova's public opinion to increase fervor and motivation. Tamari, with her competitive spirit, also used her influence to manipulate public opinion in Sunagaka. With Kanova and Sunagaka moving forward together, Natsuo's other wives began to doubt whether to follow suit. After three days of discussions, the Achiha clan family meeting came to a conclusion. The shinobi world did not need daimyos, those trash existences. With that conclusion in mind, Tsunade called Itachi, who had threatened the daimyo and his loyal nobles many times to lead the way to the capital city of the Land of Fire. Itachi was confused, he had only gone once to threaten the daimyo. The other times it was Natsuo, so he didn't know many things. In the end, Tsunade just barged straight into the daimyo's mansion and kicked him out without any other explanation. After that, together with the Kanoha Shinobi, they began confiscating the daimyo's property and any nobles who tried to resist. Then to calm the people they began to distribute part of the money directly to the citizens of the Land of Fire. In an instant, the entire capital city was filled with joy and jubilation. The daimyo and the nobles who attempted to launch a last resistance, were directly accused of attacking public officials and betraying the nation, and were sent by Tsunade to the worst mines, with the intention of reforming them through work. At the same time, the Kanoha police force rapidly expanded to take charge of all security in the different cities of the Land of Fire. In addition, Kanoha shinobi were constantly sent to eliminate all bandits and missing nin present throughout the Land of Fire. Kanoha began to distribute the farmland to the different shinobi who had meritorious acts, and rented the remaining land to the citizens of the Land of Fire. All of Kanoha began to operate in full swing. Rasa also reacted immediately, leading Tamari and the Suna shinobi directly to the capital city of the Land of Wind to imitate Kanoha's actions. Sanagaka had suffered greatly under the daimyo's rule. Because of this, 
When the Suna Shinobi began to act, they were much more extreme and completely eradicated all the nobles without hesitation. Although the other Shinobi villages did not react as quickly as Sunagaka, one by one, they also began to act after a brief reflection. In the past, there were some people with vision like Natsuo who saw through the situation, but due to the frequent conflicts in the Shinobi world, there had never been a real chance to eliminate the Daimyo. Destroying the Daimyo's governance system would inevitably cause some degree of chaos in the nation, attracting the attention of enemy nations, and making action difficult. But now, with Natsuo to suppress anyone who wants to take advantage of the chaos, the others no longer had to worry about taking action. All different countries, large or small, experienced a change of power in a single night. Of course, there were also shinobi villages that had been brainwashed by the daimyo. Like the case of Hashigaka where it was unclear if he was being arrogant, or if he let himself be charmed by the daimyo's promises. The current leader of Hashigaka publicly stated, Natsuo disrupted the country's government, committed a heinous crime, and should be sentenced to death. He then called the entire shinobi world to form an alliance to wipe out Natsuo completely. Natsuo barely remembered that village from the Naruto series, so he didn't take it seriously. Taking advantage of the fact that Madara had just been revived and was eager to do something, he was sent to solve Hashigaka. Does the puny leader of Hashigaka also call himself a cage? Very well. Let's see if you can stand up to my attacks. Madara snorted coldly and unleashed a Jinjutsu on the entire village. He made the self-styled Hoshikage commit suicide, and then emptied the entire village along with his population, and brought it to the Acheha clan for his management. His action was decisive, and he had no intention of hiding at all. Everyone was confused, isn't Echeha Madara dead? Why did he appear again? Although Madara was as arrogant as ever, why was he following Natsuo's orders? What they didn't know was that the main reason why Madara obeyed Natsuo's orders was because under his arrangements the shinobi world had reached the closest thing to peace. Furthermore, Natsuo promised to revive anyone he wants as long as he follows any arrangement that Natsuo himself makes. All the one decided at the Echeha clan family meeting. Although Natsuo was more powerful, Echeha Madara, an arrogant man by nature, had a fearsome reputation that could not be ignored. When it appeared, all opposition instantly disappeared as if it had never existed. In just three months, the system of daimyos and nobles, which had existed since before Kagai's time, completely collapsed. Meanwhile, Natsuo also promised to revive any person his wife's request. But since he has to rest between each resurrection to avoid affecting his task of reviving the Echeha clan, Priority will be given to the people who are most useful to the Achiha clan, as well as their wives, who have contributed the most to the development of the Achiha clan. So after Tsune paid the price of not being able to go to work for three consecutive days and nights, the Senju brothers slowly opened their eyes. The addition of both Hokages accelerated many plans. The second Hokage was not only a scientific genius, but he was also an expert in space-time ninjutsu, which was a great help to Amado, who was working on the space portals. The first Hokage always seemed to be a kind and compassionate man, but as someone who came from the Sengoku era. Although he had a noble heart, he had his fair share of blood on his hands. When faced with enemies that threatened peace, he would not hesitate as he once did with Ichiha Madara. Because fate began to converge on Natsuo, he went to Ichiraku Raymond to better understand the situation from Chuchi. Chuchi explained to Natsuo that due to the radical changes that Natsuo made in the line of fate, he as a part of the will of the universe, had now acquired more authority, being able to influence more things, as well as have access to more information. Natsuo understood that becoming the son of destiny does not mean that he is invincible. If he is not careful, he can fall and lose the guidance of destiny, just like what happened to Hagoromo. Shuchi also mentioned to Natsuo that for some reason the collision of universes that should have occurred decades later began to accelerate and the first spatial gaps could appear in five years or even less. Because of all this, Natsuo could no longer just dedicate himself to reviving the Achiha clan, so he put a lot of effort into developing the shinobi world. In view of this situation, the Achiha clan family reunion began to sell some of the basic technologies of the Achiha clan research institute in order to promote development. Many companies appeared that were dedicated to construction, technology, food processing, among others. This allowed many shinobi who were not good at combat to begin to depend less and less on missions to live. At the same time, Natsuo allowed everyone who managed to enter the Achiha clan academy to receive the revival series potions for free. This would allow more talents to appear in the short period of time. The Achiha Clan Research Institute also began researching methods to mass-produce these potions trying to reduce costs even further. Natsuo simplified the same Akaiken and spread it, so that all people could learn it. His objective was to use it on par with the potions of the Revival series and strengthen the general population of the Shinobi world. Three years later, the Shinobi world has stabilized. During this time Natsuo dedicated himself to strengthening many of his wives and 37 of them managed to reach the cage level among them is Yukino. Of course, it wasn't just Natsuo's wives that became stronger. Many high-level Shinobi began to appear during this time. After all, Natsuo decided to use the Western continent as a training base, and only shinobi above the elite Jonin level were allowed to intervene when a warlock intervened in conflicts. The rest of the time it was the low-level shinobi who were most active. A large number of chambers of commerce also entered the Western continent through the allied nobles of the shinobi continent. 
The sphere of influence has been expanding during this time, and almost a third of the other continent is under the control of the Shinobi continent. This type of slow assimilation of another civilization allowed the people of the Shinobi continent to prepare for future wars between universes. Another point to take into account was the method of training knights from the other continent, and although the Shinobi did not benefit much, it allowed the samurai who had almost been eliminated by the Shinobi to resurface. Some of them were even close to reaching the super cage level. However, it is worth mentioning that at the end of the first year, Akura finally decided to give in. He simply couldn't stand Rasa's arrogant behavior anymore. Although Rasa had ceded the title of Kezakiyage to Tamari, during his rule, Sunagaka had expanded rapidly, undergoing great economic changes. Furthermore, with Natsuo's help, the Land of Wind had left its previous problems behind. Tamari is one of Natsuo's wives with relative influence in the Achiha clan's family gathering. She let her father become the governor of the Land of Wind. Rasa had enough prestige and had developed his political skills, in addition to having Tamari's full support. He directly became a well-known figure throughout the Land of Wind. He was someone who helped create a new era for the Land of Wind, and would go down in history just like Achiha Madara and Senja Hashirama, who created the era of the Shinobi villages. Hakura can bear this. Finally, one day, she surrendered to Natsuo. After a while when she confirmed that she was pregnant, she left directly for the Land of Wind. Rasa is a liar. That bastard betrayed the interests of Sonagaka. He has a deal with Natsuo. Hakura spread the truth he knew about Rasa and Sonagaka, trying to awaken the Suna Shinobi, who were blinded by the reputation of Rasa's best Kazakuge. However, Rasa's prestige has been thoroughly ingrained after so many years. Although she had solid evidence and compelling arguments, the Suna Shinobi simply looked at her coldly and said, Do you know how much Kazakuge Sama sacrificed for the village? Higher level negotiations are inevitable, but you must also consider what we have obtained in the end. The current state of the Land of Wind is the result of Kazakuge Sama's efforts, don't you admit it? Pakura, I know you are depressed about being betrayed by Rasa. But you also need to know that shinobi are born to carry out the tasks assigned by their superiors. Don't say that you couldn't defeat Kiri's shinobi, and ended up dying in the process. Even if Rasa-sama orders you to commit suicide in front of Kurigika, why wouldn't you comply with his order? Pekora's student Maki tried to calm her down. Sensei, I understand your resentment towards the Kazakuge, but Rasa-sama had no choice. Let's try to accept it. After all, you have already been resurrected. Pekora, damn it. You too Maki accept this calmly. How the hell am I supposed to do that? But all the shinobi of Suna were on Rasa's side, without any hesitation. Finally, Pekora, furious, ran back to the Achiha clan residence. However, Natsuo was not surprised by the result of Pekora's actions. After all, during Rasa's administration, the Land of Wind was transformed from a patch of yellow sand to a brilliant oasis. In the second year, Natsuo married Hanata who had come of age. Because Hanata was destined to be the wife of the protagonist of this world, she has a lot of fate power in her, and although that power was supposed to be lost when Baruto was born in the original timeline, Natsuo still looks forward to the child he will have with her. Natsuo gently wrapped Hanata in his arms, feeling her softness, and slowly laid her down. This heroine was giving Natsuo quite an impressive experience during these three years, others were also busy. Because Sasuke and Naruto were the next people with the highest destiny, Natsuo took them to meet Chichi. After they found out about all the things that could happen in the future, they toured both the Shinobi continent and the Western continent training all over the world. They killed sand bandits in the Land of Wind, exterminated some of the mountain clans in the Land of Earth, subdued Funato Oromi, and had the Funato clan join the Ichiha clan's fleet. They even defeated some of the warlocks that ruled some of the kingdoms of the Western continent. Naruto and Sasuke solemnly promised, Natsuo, don't worry, we will be the vanguard in the next war between the universes. Besides, what is the Otsutsuki clan? Wait and see. The next time the Otsutsuki clan attacks, you won't need to intervene, the two of us will be enough. For this reason, we will put a lot of effort into our training. Look forward to our return. However, Kishina expressed serious doubts about this. She thought that the reason why Naruto ran and returned home once every six months was probably because he didn't want to be controlled by her. It's all Jiraiya's fault, who corrupted my son. Kishina was furious. If I had known, I wouldn't have allowed Naruto to be named after the protagonist of Jiraiya's novels. Meanwhile, Natsuo also sought out Orochimaru to continue developing ways to strengthen than his wives. So far Natsuo has only been able to integrate other bloodlines in Makoto, Kishina, Tsunade and Yoko. The rest of his wives cannot tolerate the integration of other lineages. Natsuo wanted Orochimaru to use the method of the warlocks of the western continent, who use the Jewel Stones to integrate with other bloodlines. Orochimaru looked at Natsuo speechlessly. Honestly, although high-level powerhouses have their quirks, is there anyone as strange as Natsuo in the shinobi world? This is really is it because of the exclusive technique of the Manjekyo Sharingan? Orochimaru suddenly asked. The Manjekyo technique is the reflection of your deepest desires. And your deepest desire is to have children. So does your technique strengthen you the more children you have? Although Orochimaru was asking, his eyes were filled with surprising confidence. Although that is not the case, it seems that Orochimaru is not too far from the truth. 
Natsuo just smiled and didn't answer. Orochimaru felt that Natsuo had already acquiesced, and his expression was extremely shocked. After waiting for a long time, he retracted his eyes and began to think. What is the specific effect of the technique? Where does the strengthening come from? Is it based on the talent of your children? Or does it have something to do with the number of children, or even the mother? At first, he was seriously reflecting. But as a scientist with a creative mind, he soon veered into more extravagant territory. Does this ability only work between men and women? Can it work between men? Have you experimented with animals? Have you tried artificial insemination? Orochimaru's eyes were full of curiosity. It is normal for Orochimaru to guess some of Natsuo's secrets. Natsuo's story was so legendary that his strange strength improvements from spending time with women could not be explained by his natural talent alone. And honestly, Natsuo didn't believe that Orochimaru could guess the existence of the system, since even Chuchi didn't notice any abnormalities in Natsuo. But even if Natsuo mentioned the existence of the system, what did it matter? Of course, Natsuo wouldn't openly brag about that. He simply tacitly accepted Orochimaru's theory. However, Orochimaru's ideas were something Natsuo could consider. Although honestly, Natsuo wouldn't dare try something with another man or another scandalous theory. But artificial reproduction might be worth a try. After a time of scientific research, Orochimaru and Natsuo came to the conclusion that children born through artificial reproduction were not recognized by the Manjekyo technique system. Only children conceived through biological reproduction between Natsuo and a woman were recognized. During these three years, the technology of the shinobi world also advanced by leaps and bounds. Although it did not become an interstellar civilization in the full sense of the word, at least stable transportation was developed to colonize the moon, without having to resort to space passage. In addition, outer space near the shinobi world began to be explored in search of more planets and resources. Also during this period of time, Ichiha Madara managed to reawaken the Rinnegan and from time to time used the Tengai Shinsei to attract massive meteorites and made them land in the ocean. Then the family reunion of the Achiha clan sold the mining rights of those meteorites to the different powers on the Shinobi continent. Many minerals were extracted, new metals and even some minerals with high energy value, such as the meteorite used by ancient Hashigaka. A number of industries were established thanks to these massive meteorites. The abundance of these mining resources had directly reduced the cost of living for the inhabitants of the Shinobi continent, improving their quality of life and increasing their income. It really was a source of great benefits. On the other hand, because Natsuo improved his way of life with the chakra fruit as well as with the constant strengthening of his wives. During the three years that passed, the rewards he obtained from his children were quite generous. He obtained all types of shinjutsu, and the evaluation of his children's potential was always greater than 200 points. Of course, the most talented child was the one he had with Kagaya. Offspring plus 1, the comprehensive potential evaluation is 381, you get chakra plus 35, Shinjutsu. Primordial Bond Shinjutsu. Primordial Bond is a chakra-based technique of the highest level used by Otsutsuki Shibai to enslave the god trees. Thanks to this technique, Natsuo was able to free Asiki's god tree and formed an equal bond with his bloodline. He later gave the god tree the human-human fruit, which allowed it to take on human form. Unfortunately, she did not become a woman, and Natsuo abandoned the idea of having a child with the lineage of a divine tree. The god tree took on a form similar to a Siki, Natsuo assumed this was because the god tree had devoured Asiki previously. The god tree in his new human form called itself Shinkamino, and Natsuo took him to Chuchi to take care of him. This action also allowed the last restrictions that prevented Chuchi from helping Natsuo to be removed. That is why when Natsuo noticed that the system was consuming part of Hinata's fate while she was pregnant, he asked Chuchi for help, so that he could channel the greatest amount of fate energy into Hinata. And although Hinata's child was not the child of Natsuo with the greatest potential, it did give him the best reward. Offspring plus 1, the comprehensive potential evaluation is 281, you get chakra plus 25, cosmic gate. According to the system description, the cosmic gate is the means to explore the void, and, if you have the coordinates of a universe, it is possible to travel there. The void is defined as the realm beyond the limits of the universe, and to move between universes, it is necessary to traverse it. The operation of the cosmic gate requires significant energy resources. Furthermore, the energy of the origin of the universe is absolutely crucial to accessing the void realm. A door to other universes. No wonder she's the female protagonist of the Naruto world. Now, I understand why the system consumed so much fade energy. Natsuo thought deeply. After finishing understanding how the cosmic gate worked, Natsuo immediately decided to try it. He mobilized the resources of the Echiha clan to gather various high-level energy sources and make various preparations before beginning to operate the cosmic gate. Although he doesn't know if he could obtain results without the coordinates of another universe, he still decided to try. Land of Fire, secret base of the Achiha clan. Formations of technical formulas, kanji, and detailed, complex graphics dotted the four walls. These formations are attracting natural energy. It seems that I've seen something similar in my inherited memory. Shinkamino let out a cry of surprise as he entered with Chuchi into the central chamber of the secret base. Just based on the meticulous preparation, one could tell the complex and terrifying nature of the cosmic gate mentioned by Natsuo Chuchi side. His eyes couldn't help but look at the center of the room. In the center, a large area of starlight was emitting bright rays. The inside seemed to contain something, 
but it couldn't be seen clearly. At that moment Natsuo was near the center of the room, where several circles of Fuenjutsu radiated a golden glow. This is the physical state of the Cosmic Gate. Simply opening one greatly depleted the accumulated energy resources of the Ichiha clan. If it weren't for the fact that I technically control the entire Shinobi world, it would have bankrupted me. The operating time of a Cosmic Gate is very valuable. First I will program it at its lowest limit, which will allow us to pass spatial coordinate markers. I'll need your help with the next thing Chuchi. Natsuo's voice echoed, okay? I'll start channeling some of the origin energy. Chu Chi's eyes radiated a faint golden glow as he formed a golden crystal in his hand, and then threw it towards the blue flame at the center. Boom. The golden crystal collided with the blue flames, and a violent reaction instantly occurred. A large amount of golden light radiated out, which was immediately absorbed by the blue flames. Then a kind of mercury mirror formed in the center with black waves radiating from its center. This feeling, it is quite similar to the energy released during teleportation, but it possesses a greater degree of disorder and violence, Shinkamino reflected in a low voice. Get ready Natsuo, now I will channel the energy of fate towards you. Shuchi reminded Natsuo. Alright? Natsuo quickly formed a cocoon with his chakra. Fuenjutsu marks appeared on its surface, and when they disappeared, it took on a silver tone. Natsuo then threw it into the mirror. Natsuo began to explain. Space-time positioning is extremely simple. With the repeated release of these cocoons, we could stumble upon a different universe. Generally speaking, the probability is extremely low, and there may not even be a single case of success in 10,000 attempts. So, isn't this just trying my luck? Now I understand why you wanted me to channel the energy of destiny towards you. Chuchi rolled his eyes and was somewhat speechless. Actually this would not be possible if it were not for the collision between universes, causing the distance between them to shorten as time goes, by Natsuo said, as he looked with concentration at the mirror. At that moment, Natsuo felt that the chakra cocoon entered a turbulent space. After a while the cocoon finally managed to enter the other universe. The cocoon continued traveling through the universe while searching for a habitable planet, until Natsuo, through his connection with the cocoon, vaguely saw a huge world. Natsuo estimated that this world was approximately 150 times the size of the Shinobi world. As the cocoon approached that planet, Natsuo noticed that most of the world's surface is covered by water. In addition, there was a huge red strip of land that divided the world. Natsuo immediately recognized what world it was It's the world of One Piece. Once the cocoon entered the planet, it dissolved and recorded the coordinates on the cosmic gate. When this happened Natsuo lost the connection, and could not see where in the One Piece world, the exit from the cosmic gate was recorded. As Natsuo withdrew his consciousness, his attention was drawn to the boundaries between the universe and the void. There she saw a thin man floating, with long white hair that reached the small of her back. He wore a worn black robe, his horns curved upward resembling a crown. He had three eyes, one of which was on his forehead, all of his eyes were closed. Additionally he had a small beard that is divided into five sections covering his chin. The strangest thing was that there were several golden chains that came out of the void and crossed various parts of his body. The places where the chains had passed through him emanated a purple energy that seemed to be corroding those chains. The next moment, he turned his head in Natsuo's direction, then the connection was cut off completely. Natsuo knew immediately that that person was Otsutsuki Shibai. Excellent. Thank you Chuchi, although in the end there was an unexpected situation, everything was a success. Now that we have the space-time coordinates we can reach the other universe. This will give us an advantage in the next collision of universes. Natsuo looked in Chuchi's direction. You don't need to thank me, as long as your actions benefit the universe. I will give you all my help. Chuchi responded as he left the room with Natsuo and Shinkamino. Natsuo smiled in response and then turned to Shinkamino. Shinkamino, as I promised you, once we reach the other universe, it will allow you to absorb enough genetic material, as well as vital energy, to continue your evolution. Also, the planet we will arrive at has a higher level of energy than the planet we are on, and it is very likely that you can use Shinjutsu, chakra edible creation, to create chakra fruits. As they left the secret base, Natsuo continued talking for a while longer with Juchi and Shinkamino, before saying goodbye. Natsuo had to prepare for the astronomical consumption of energy that the Cosmic Gate will consume, when he decides to establish a stable passage with the other universe. One year later, One Piece World Marineford. Today is a historic day for the world. Perhaps it will be a day that will never be forgotten by the Navy, the pirates or even all of humanity. Today is the public execution of Porkers D.A.'s the commander of the 2nd Division of the Whitebeard Pirates. Not only that, even the Navy will broadcast it through Den Den Mushi, so that everyone can see it. But the focus of many people is not on Ace's execution, but on the possible Great War between the Whitebeard Pirates and the Marines. Now all naval forces have gathered at Marineford, including the Seven Warlords of the Sea, as well as the Pacifists. The three admirals are already in their respective seats to face this battle. Sengoku, as the fleet admiral, stands on the execution platform next to Ace. Sengoku-sama. We received reports that the Gates of Justice opened on their own without any order. 
Furthermore, we cannot communicate with the control room. One of the Navy officers informed Sengoku in panic. What did you say? Shouted Sengoku who was very upset with the news he had just heard. He then looked ahead and saw from a distance, one by one, ships that he believed were part of Whitebeard's pirate fleet began to appear. He was shocked and increasingly annoyed by what he was currently seeing. How did they suddenly appear? Sengoku muttered in annoyance. Little by little, numerous huge ships made of metal began to emerge from the fog approaching towards Marineford. All of Marineford fell into a tense silence as they watched the huge fleet appear. Suddenly, a whirlpool formed in Marineford Bay, as if something was about to emerge from under the water. Impossible, Sengoku said as he noticed the whirlpool. From the whirlpool emerged a large ship covered by a huge bubble. That ship was none other than the Whitebid Pirate's main ship, the Moby Dick. An hour before at the Gates of Justice, the sun shines on the calm sea while seagulls circle. The marines were relaxed, some of them were waiting to watch the broadcast of Ace's execution. But without them realizing it, several invisible figures infiltrated the command center. Naomi, are you ready to deploy our skills and surprise these marines? Goro communicated telepathically with Naomi, with a playful spark in his eyes. Of course. Who knew our skills would be so useful in this world? Naomi responded when she saw that no one could detect them. The squad led by Naomi and Goro, who were wearing chakra armors, gathered around them. Naomi concentrated, using her abilities to detect the position of all the marines. Then Goro and Naomi telepathically sent the information to the entire squad. After they established the blocking bar, and when everyone was in their positions, Naomi channeled Chakra into her throat to scream. Begin. Naomi, using the Sharingan along with her special abilities, immediately invaded the minds of all the marines, leaving them stunned for a moment. Goro laughed loudly as he used his telekinesis to disarm the marines, making their weapons float in the air before launching them at them. Naomi, along with the rest of the squad, showed off their camouflage skills appearing and disappearing before the amazed eyes of the marines as they attacked them. Between laughter and a series of abilities incomprehensible to people in the world of One Piece, Goro and Naomi took control of the gates of justice. In the control room while Naomi activated the mechanism to open the doors of justice, she took out a communication device and called Rayan, who was leading the fleet along with the rest of her siblings. Big brother, we have succeeded in our mission. You can proceed according to the plan. We'll catch up with them at Marineford. Goro exclaimed excitedly. Naomi also smiled excitedly since this was the first time they participated in such a large-scale war. After being revived, Senju Toborama never thought that he would one day participate in such large-scale battles. And even more so that these battles would involve the fate of an entire universe. He was currently supervising the flagship of the Shinobi World's fleet. The fleet has just crossed the gates of justice, and was preparing to get involved in one of the most important wars in this world. What he disliked the most was that he had to take care of the brats of the Ichiha clan. He didn't understand why those evil Ichiha could be so powerful at only 10 or 11 years old. And now he had to stop them from doing something crazy and rushing to the front lines. The worst of all is that Natsuo said that he had to go deal with the people in Mary G.I.S., so Toborama became responsible for this operation. Toborama sat in the captain's chair. Have you notified everyone to be ready for battle? Toborama asked Rayan who had just entered the command bridge. Yes, but Sasuk was delayed because of the stowaways he brought to the ship. Rayan responded seriously. Sometimes Toborama didn't understand how a child like Rayan could be part of the evil Ichiha clan. Just as Toborama was about to get angry at Sasuke for his actions, he entered the command bridge. Evil Ichiha? How dare you bring those kinds of women onto the ship, when we are carrying out such an important task. Toborama knew Sasuke's character well since he became Jiraiya's disciple. They are not that type of women, they are the daughters of the King of Porsain. Porsain is the kingdom where the cosmic gate opened and was controlled by the shinobi world. Toborama remembers seeing the appointed king and his family see off the ships from the port, including his daughters. He tried to think of how they could have gotten to the ship. You don't need to think about it. I brought them using the Flying Thunder God. Sasuke told him indifferently. Toborama was furious when he heard that his precious technique was used for this kind of thing. Just as he was about to scold Sasuke, Rayan interrupted him. Toborama-sama, we are about to arrive at Marineford. When he heard that, Toborama turned to look from the bridge at the imposing fortress of Marineford, and moments later he saw the scene in which the Moby Dick appeared in Marineford Bay. He immediately ignored Sasuke and went to the deck preparing for battle. When he reached the deck he saw Ryoji, one of Natsuo's sons, holding a huge saber. He was surrounded by the members of the Funato clan, as they chanted his name, and rang their weapons in anticipation of the slaughter, each of them eager to rush to kill the enemies. Toborama immediately approached Ryoji and led him away from the crowd. Evil Ichiha brat, didn't your father warn you not to go to the front of the battle? You could be killed by an admiral if you're not careful. At that moment a loud voice was heard. Girarara, I'll save you ace. Immediately afterwards the sea water at Marineford rose and became a tsunami. Ice age. A moment later the entire enormous tsunami froze. Come on Madara, let's join in the fun. Hashirama was very excited to see such a demonstration of power. It seems there are some guys who are strong enough to catch my interest. 
Madara commented. Immediately afterward, Hashirama and Madara launched themselves forward and began running over the sea. Tobarama could only watch helplessly as his brother and Madara left, without taking into account all the plans that had been made in advance. How are we supposed to save the target people and eliminate the people who might become obstacles in the future? To hell with it, this is evil Ichiha Natsuo's fault for leaving early. Then he also launched himself to join the battlefield. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.